Welcome to another episode of the EPR podcast, History of EPR podcast. My name is Scott Bernard. We have a special treat today for everybody. Something I've been having a really hard time keeping to myself, but I want to help people. We actually have three guests on today. We have Russell with me there, my co-host, and we have two guys down in Florida. Um, I'm going to bring John Hallett, who's a very good trainer in Florida, very well known, has lots of war winning horses down there. He's going to be with me today, and we also have a special guest today, and I'm going to go down his achievements. Um, he was EPR driving champion in 1981, 82, 83, had his first victory in 1975, had the 1983 Canadian Ice Race Championship in Ottawa, won the Walter Dale in 1981, 84, 86, the Bat Crown Blue Series, 1982 winner, Alexander Morrill in 1981, 82, Gold Cup and Saucer, 2001 and 2005, and also he is in the PEI Hall of Fame. United States Racing Hall of Fame and Canadian Horse Racing Hall of Fame. And that is literally just a small sample. So we're going to bring John on here first. Hey, John. How are you doing today? How you doing? Good, good. How are you making out? Good? Good. Awesome. But thank you for coming on. I appreciate it. Yeah. And we're, right. gonna... we're sitting here in air conditioning. We're good. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I got down in Florida getting that warm weather. So we're going to bring Russell in. Hey, Russell. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks again, Scott, for listing all my accomplishments as well. Really appreciate that. Russell sells cars. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. And we're also going to bring on, as everybody probably knows by now, Wally Hennessy. Hey, Wally, how you making out? All right, Scott. Good to be on with you guys today. Hope we oh, have yeah. some fun. Oh, we will. No, yeah. it's going to be a real good time. I got lots of fun questions. We got some cool uh, pictures. Cool. We got a couple of videos. The way I actually did the videos, I actually most of the racing ones. And I don't want to tell you what they are yet. They're like the end of the race, like last quarter, stuff like that. Because if we do that, we'll be here for nine hours. <laughs> we do all the videos. So um, let's just kind of start it real quick. I'm going to get Russell to start because Russell's going to bring up a certain thing here. And yeah, so Russell, if you want to start it there with Wally, go ahead. Yeah, no, we're welcome to the show today, guys. Really, really appreciate you coming in. Great to see you. Um, what I'm going to do is Scott has just worked, he, and he literally worked all night putting videos and pictures and whatnot together. And uh, I'm going to uh, just jump in the odd time with just a few few uh, references to some, not just famous horses, but uh, if you've watched a couple of the podcasts, I like sometimes to mention lesser known horses, but horses that you guys will remember and, and hopefully have some fond memories of as well. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plug uh, your book, Wally, uh, right here. Uh, the, the, just a great book. I've read it a couple of times. and. Uh, Gary McDougall did an outstanding job on it. Yeah. And uh, and as you know, uh, Wally, they're a great team over at Retro Media to, to work with. And and uh, there's uh, one thing about this, when you're, when you're doing a biography, um, one of the things that's so good is everybody learns things they didn't know. And I've learned a number of things in reading it, Wally, that I didn't know as well. And uh, we're going to, we're going to touch on those a little bit too, as we kind of go through the show. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy it, and I, I think you're going to really like it. And we get, and we got Scott's got a really nice picture he, he we were able to uncover at the end of the show too. So yeah, yeah it's a take cool. her take her away, Scott. All yeah. right, so let's just start out pretty much um, with John. Like, what have you been up to lately, John? I know you're down in Florida right now with Wally, and what's what's been going on? Pretty much, we'll start there. Uh, I basically keep ten to twelve horses. Uh, I come here for the winters. This is permanent home for me. I mm -hmm. go to New York usually in May, come back middle of November. Yeah, uh, basically, it's been like that for thirty something years now. Awesome, awesome. So you're a big fan. So what about you, Wally? Like you've been racing a lot, obviously still going because I have your stats in front of me. I mean, geez, 2021, you had 435 wins, so you're still going pretty strong, eh? Yeah. Well, f first off, and I I, I know uh, Bo feels the same way. Uh, you guys, uh, Russell and Scott, uh, and whoever else is involved in you know the production or whatever of what you guys are posting and putting up i don't get to see it much i'm not on facebook but thank you so much for this because um i, I well if you guys weren't doing it i don't know who would be and uh, it would be lost so uh, i gotta thank you guys for that and yeah, uh, th thanks it. for having bo and i on and when when, when bo told me you'd like to, for me to come on I, I said that'd be great they're going to tell me some stuff that I completely forgot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was, I was telling my friend, I said to her, I said, I was mentioning you how to bring two guys on. And I, you know, I said, this, Wally was, you know, he was the man back in the day. You know, he was the guy who was the man in the EPR. And I said, um, 
it's gonna be cool because I mean I've watched a couple of interviews and I did my research on it. I've seen some interviews from you in Florida and stuff. I said I never really seen anybody PR, so it's gonna be fun. Yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Well, I've got some really cool pictures, some cool videos. We got a funny, a little bit of a funny video around the end there. You're gonna like that one. But um, no, definitely. So and same goes for you, John. I see you had a really good year in 2021. Also, when I looked at the stats that you provided for me. So you guys were looking real good in 2021. Yeah, you know, we've had some luck. The owners have been supplying us with decent horses, and you got to have the horse flex to be able to win. And uh, I've been able to utilize the best drivers in North America, and Wally's been a part of a lot of them. And, yep. and uh, that that works out. When you get the horses, you get the drivers. It works out. Definitely. Awesome. Okay, so uh, I got a question for Wally here. So, Wally, you obviously grew up in a harness racing family. I did my research. Your grandfather raced horses. Your father raced horses, which I'm going to bring up a little clip there in a second. So was it automatic, Raleigh? Like basically you were born right into it pretty much? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> actually, I never really thought about doing anything else. Um, um, as an early, At an early age, I can't even remember how young, Scott, but yeah. I was, from the time I was born, I was pretty well at the stable area. And um, watching my father, who was a complete, you know, harness racing professional and good at what he'd done, and everybody had respect for him and I, I seen that growing up and he taught me all the right ways to do things and um so it was a no-brainer that th this is what i was going to do i i never ever believed that you know we'd be talking here today and 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 the numbers are what they are because yeah. at the start it was so horrible but uh it was something i always wanted to do and I, I, it's it's all i've ever done really how about you, John? Was it pretty like for yourself, your background a little bit coming into it? How'd that work out for you? Actually, a couple of days before my sixth birthday, I was in Beavers. You remember Beavers? You know, yeah, yeah. Beavers. <laughs> and I was selling apples. But where better to sell apples than the racetrack? Than the racetrack. Oh. Exactly. And yeah. I sold all my apples. I came back again and again and again. And initially, I was hanging out with Ted and Tom Scoble and Francis McIsaac's bar. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's where you started out. Kind of, yeah, that's awesome. Great story. So I'm going to bring up a video, guys, for Wally here. Let me go down to my videos. And this is a video. I'm not going to see where I got it because it's kind of a little secret. But it's an actual, it's an audio of his father talking from a documentary in the late 60s. Um, and what I have is I have a picture of his father. And we're just going to go through the audio. It's about a minute long. So we're going to bring this up. And also, guys, I'll let you know when we do videos, um, everyone's muted. So if anybody needs anything, just like wave your hands or something. I mean, just so I know. So we're going to bring it up right now. Here it comes. Drivers. Joe Hennessy may drive as many as a dozen dashes a day, but no two will be exactly alike. He knows what his own horse will do, but he must also know what to expect from his opponents. Today, he's driving a good gelding named Mr. Rock. The strategy that I use before going on the racetrack, I take my scorecard and I look over the horses that are in the race with me. I figure which horse in that particular race I have to beat. Then a lot depends on the horse which I am driving. Like take for instance a horse like Mr. Rock. He's a horse that will not race in the front. So I gotta get him against the fence and keep him there as long as I possibly can. And when I hit the back stretch with him the second time around, I generally look for a hole and move him. But then again, sometimes that hole is not there. And in that case, you don't come out too well in that race. But if that hole is there, you generally go on, and with a horse like him, he can finish well, and he always does pretty good. Now, there's other horses that you have to, that will uh, race behind. You've got to keep them against the fence all the time. And then there's other different horses which will race good in front. Those kind of horses that are called front runners, they will go all the way in the front end. Now, then again, there's a, an element of luck that comes into this game of racing and if you haven't got that luck with you in that particular race sometimes it proves a failure <laughs> so that was a that's a cool video i had to like do the audio so i switched it to audio and put the picture to it but i got that picture from aubrey wood aubrey wood actually gave me that picture of your father yeah at the uh down in Stroud town so that's a really cool so yeah i obviously i mean i get that from my personal experience my father was like you know he was the god back in the day for me when i was a kid hanging around the track, doing anything I could to get involved in it. So I think it's, you know, I get the idea. It's in everyone's, it's in your blood, right? So, yep. Okay, so I'm going to let Russell hop in. He goes, Russell is going to start, is going to ask Wally about how we got to start in harness racing, like once you actually well, start racing and stuff. 
Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I learned, and again, I'm going to uh, shamelessly plug the book here today, Wally, if that's okay. <laughs> that's very but, good. That's very good. Yeah. One, one of the things that I that I learned that I didn't know, and it, it's really hard to believe uh, for people that know you and the success you've had, when you first started driving uh, at uh, 18 years old, Wally, you didn't have a lot of success. And in fact, a lot of times you drove, you never even finished the race. Maybe you could kind of fill in the viewers on, on what <laughs> happened uh, in those situations. Uh, I, was, I was horrible. <laughs> uh, no, that's the truth. Uh, um, it, uh, I don't know. I, I, I was trying too hard. Um, I was way more aggressive than I should have been for the, you know, I, I thought I was groomed to be, the next Hervé Fillion, right? I thought when I started, I was just going to burn the place up. And and it was just the complete opposite. And uh, But I never lost, lost my confidence. <laughs> I lost a whole lot of other things, but not my confidence. <laughs> <laughs> but I, well, I, what kept me going was um, my family and my father, because um, I thought I was letting them down. And I yeah. said, I know, I know I can't be this horrible. I, I never dreamt, like I said, it would turn out like it did, but I, I never thought it was that could be that poor. There's no way you can be that awful. But it, you're you're right, Russell. Like I don't know what made me stick in because I would say my first ten drives, I was on the ground four four times, five times. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it was all my fault too. It was nobody else's fault. It was all mine. I was putting horses in holes where they shouldn't have went, and uh, you know, it was it, it, the horses weren't as good a gate at then as they are now, and yeah. I'm not excuses, but uh, I was horrible. That's that's oh. about it. Yeah, I think I think you're being a little hard on yourself, Wally, because I remember the era very well, and it's not like uh, today. Uh, horses back then, uh, they they had serious emotional problems, shall we say, <laughs> and uh, and uh, there 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 was a tendency for them to act up. So uh, unfortunately, accidents were pretty commonplace, but. Uh, I think you. I think you finally came around a little bit after that initial uh, initial uh, poor start. So, so that's great. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I'm gonna hop in too on this one. Um, so, while you were from the islands, what made you come to EPR? I think your your brother was here before, was he? Jody was here before um, you. Jody, yeah, Jody was actually not not to base there, but Jody had raced mm -hmm. there a few times. Yeah, yeah. And guys, the reason I ended up in EPR necessity. Um, mm -hmm. I think I was 19 or 20 the first time I came over. And uh, I, I, you, you've probably all heard about me having that six hour shift. On, down yeah, I was going to mention that. The, was that the dry dock? Is that where that was? Was the dry dock? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, dry dock. yeah right, down, right down below there, you know, with yeah, the old yeah. EW down that, down that way there. Yeah, yeah. One yeah. way, uh, a knapsack and $10 in my pockets. And I knew it was exhibition week in okay. uh, St. John. I had never been to St. John. Yeah. And I hooked up with the Whalens, uh, Jimmy and Walter Whalen, and they hired me for the week. The pay was just fair. The, pay yeah. was fair. <laughs> the experience, the experience was an uh, experience of a lifetime. And yeah. uh, uh, went to Fredericton the next week because you know, as you guys know, yeah. that's what usually routinely happened. Like Fred Fredericton goes the very next week, and yeah. and uh, Walter and Jimmy gave me opportunities to drive some what I thought at that time was, and they were pretty nice horses. So, mm -hmm. And Russell's going to bring that up too, the horses. Yeah. Keep going. So yeah, Russell's yeah. going to bring so, the horses. So I, I, I left, I went back home to the island and the Whalens came into play again. George Murphy had some really nice horses and he was looking for a, a private trainer. Francis McIsaac would drive them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But when he couldn't, that gave me the opportunity. So you, you guys remember another Macca? Remember oh yeah, I, I don't remember. I wasn't alive. But I heard about him. Yeah. I heard about him. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember him very well, Wally. But uh, yeah. it's 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 funny you should bring that up because uh, it it seems like you had the support of two of the uh, of really big families in the uh, industry. You had uh, obviously Walter and Jimmy Whalen and Basil Whalen, but then you have Francis McIsaac, who was probably juggling about fifty or sixty horses at that time. And uh, and George Murphy, one of his bigger owners, and I think you arrived here with uh, Colonial Court and Lions Boy and Our Darling. Yeah. And and yeah. Uh, I have I have to put the Our Darling plug in for Don Hubbard because that was her favorite horse. Oh, so. that, oh she loved that horse. 
Yeah. But you know, really, Wally, when you arrived here, uh, those weren't terrible horses. Those were those were mid class horses, and uh, I think that may have helped you get off to a pretty good start having having mid class horses. Yeah, well, like I said, uh, <clears throat> the deal was that if uh, uh, if Francis couldn't drive them, ninety percent of the time he couldn't because he had so many of his own horses. I was right. training on these, and and yeah. so I pretty much drove all the above except another Macca. Francis yeah. never really had a top top horse, and in the winter time, another Macca was just unbeatable at, at Exhibition Park. We were talking about that yeah. yesterday. I mean, Tim Ryan were talking. My uncle were talking about that yesterday in the car. We were driving. He said, "And I'm back." So you couldn't beat Francis in the winter. No. So yeah, but keep going with it. Yeah, that's that's interesting yeah. to say that. He 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 was he was the, he was the he was the top horseman, and like you say, listen, it wasn't only uh, the Whalens and Francis. I had so much support, and yeah, uh, you know, you're going to ask the questions, but the fall up in the other corner there. Uh, I met him when he was about six years old. Yeah, and he's been my friend. And uh, he, he supported me my whole career. That's yeah. awesome. I got, a, I got a cool video of you guys here. I think it's you guys. I'll bring that up in a couple of seconds. I'm going to get to John. So there's a cool video of you two, which actually I'll bring it up right now. And, uh, and I'll let Russell jump in. This is a oh, kind of background this video. Bruce Maxwell, and God bless Bruce Maxwell, one of the nicest people in the world. And Bruce, I swear, is the best hoarder you'll ever meet because he keeps everything. And he kept these old reels from the 70s. And he's like, oh, I got these. Do you want them? I'm like, do I want them? What are you, crazy? This is CPR in the 76. But I'm pretty sure you're in this video, Wally, and I'm pretty sure John is coming right behind you. So I'll show it. I might show it again because it's about 10 seconds long. But let's take a look at it. And you'll see yourself pulling the bike. There you are there. Yeah, that's Mo, Mo Doherty. And, and who else is there? Mo, who's that father fellow there? That's that's Gordy Shan that's Gordy Shannon, Wally. Yeah. Now, did you and see John no. behind you? Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Wally. Yeah. No. Yeah. Is, did, were you coming, Bo, behind? I didn't see it. Yeah. Let's take a look. That's I love it. That was like I see that. That is the greatest thing ever for you guys to put on this show here. So there you go. <laughs> you see Bo's like running right behind here. Come there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, I was probably mad at him. That's why I was on the car. And he come running. See, he was probably supposed to have the cart there about five minutes before, and then I'd be mad, you know. They, you know never mind, I'll take it myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that, that's that's my, awesome. Uh, my Go cross ahead, country runner used to be mad at me for missing my Wednesday uh, uh, exercises. Obviously, he was at the track one night and watched the way we ran back and forth from the barn to the attic, and then for yeah. the rest of the next couple of years, he excused me from having to be there on Wednesdays. Oh yeah, and, exactly. What a, oh, I remember being a kid back there. Just, my mother would tell me, you're not going to the barns. Do not go to the barns. I go to the track with my grandfather. I won't, I promise. And I mean, I'd be back there before the first race. And I cut my chin open one time, made a big elaborate story. My mother was like, you know, like three of the guys called me and they knew your chin was busted open like 10 minutes later. But yeah, that's, uh, it's chaotic over there back in the 70s and 80s. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you want to add, Russell? Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say one one of the other things too. The back then is it's not like today, guys, where you, every horse has their own harness and own bike. And uh, now, you know, back then everybody was scrambling back and forth, having to bring pieces of harness for the next horse that was racing, and and get a bike or a jog cart for one to warm up. So, yeah, I think it's fair to say that uh, you guys got your exercise back in those days. Oh yeah, they definitely did. Spall is getting that there. Well, no, I'm, I'm, good. I'm good. I'm sorry. Oh, that's no problem. No, no worries. Well, it's is, that all fan all right. is that fan bothering you? No, not at all. No, not at all. No, no. no I was just gonna get. I was gonna jump in real quick here. Um, where am I out of my list? So, Wally, like you say, when you first started, you had a little bit of a rough time at first. When did you think you really came into your own? You kind of like I would say got it, like understood it more. Um, it was a slow progress, you know, process. Uh, yeah. You know, <clears throat> one thing you got to remember back in them days, guys. It was truly amazing the talent that was okay. at Exhibition Park Race. Uh, that barn area was full. There was no room for a, a barn cat. That's how full they were. Yeah. And uh, the talent that was there, like Marcel Barry, who had been a great friend of mine, still, we, we're side by side down here in Florida. Um, yeah. You know, I learned so much from him, you know, as a horseman, you know, great driver, but he's a tremendous horseman. Uh, Francis was here. Oh, oh yeah. I, I can go on and on. Steve Maher, yeah. uh, my brother Jody, who I who I believe he could have been me. Like I don't mean be me, but he could have put my numbers up. 
If yeah, he, he was great. Yeah, Jody was really good. Yeah. I'm telling you, he he was fearless. He could yeah. make he could make a a bad horse look good. He could make a sour horse look good. He could drive any any kind of an individual of a horse. And uh, but he was here. Um, Boyd Tremere, Cali yeah. Rankin. Yeah. Uh, who, uh, let me Willard Carr, the old wizard. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, I mean. Uh, stocked, stocked what a people. Character he was too, you know. Herman Renault, Herman Renault was there. Uh, I'm just trying to think of some names. Oh, you could go on all day. That could be a whole podcast right there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah we're yeah. going to show pictures of them as we go on too, Wally. You're going to see a few of those guys as we go along here. Definitely, they, they were great teachers, and 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 you know when I'd go out there, uh, I will say this, and I don't like to talk about myself, but I I had the utmost respect for every one of them. Uh, and, uh, probably that hurt me a little bit in the beginning because I, I didn't want to put myself in a situation where I was going to kind of hurt them or be in their way. And you yeah. can't be like that when you're driving, you have to just drive your horse as is. And, and, uh, if something happens in the racetrack and you hurt somebody out there, if they, if they can't take it when it's over, well, that's their problem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's just like hockey, you leave it out on the track or you leave it out yeah. on the ice, Wally. Yeah, well, and we listen. They all did, but like I said, yeah. I, I think my, my I was slow kind of to get there be, because of that reason. I just had so much respect for everybody that uh, you know, and 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 I oh, what what about I forgot the first great all time catch driver ever in Atlantic Canada, Clarky Smith. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean the greatest. I mean he was he was one of the first uh, uh, catch drivers in in, in Atlantic Canada. Uh, he always yeah. had a big table, but he was in St. John at that time. Yeah. How could yeah. I forget Clarky Smith? <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. I'm going to bring up uh, one of the first guys that you worked with, which is who recently passed away. Is a picture right here, Wally. This is old with Don Galbraith. Oh, Tony yeah. Galbraith, 1979. I think um, Russell is going to bring up a few things about a few of them horses. If you want to start with that, Russell. Yeah, it. Yeah, Don just passed away a couple of months ago. I know you guys are aware of that. And uh, from my research, Wally, I think that uh, if one of your biggest your your biggest win to date actually was August twenty seventh, nineteen seventy nine, and uh, that was the uh, beginning Monday night of exhibition week, and you drove a horse called Rapid Bye Bye to win the Invitational, and you beat out Scott's grandfather's horse, Scotch Gommon. Oh yeah, <laughs> wow. and with Rapid Bye Bye. With rapid bye bye, yeah, wow. but but yeah. The, but but the significance the significance of the race, Wally, was uh, uh, his owner, uh, Mister Gerald E. Lowe, never went out in the winner's circle hardly. But for this night, I never seen him move so fast because uh -huh. it was the Miss Canada pace, and he went out there to get himself <laughs> beside Miss Canada. So, yeah, uh, funny. so that that was uh, that was actually your first big invitational win, and that was in August uh, of 1979. And I know that that started a journey with uh, you and the Gal Brace table of a lot of great horses and a lot of big wins. Yeah, they they uh, Donnie Donnie Gal Brace, he he was one of the ones that really gave me a, a big big boost uh i believe i drove all his top horses um yeah you know it, it was a progression but donnie stuck with me and and the thing about i, I liked about him uh, whether you were first or you were last good drive or bad drive he didn't pat you on the back when he, no. when, he when he gave a good drive and and he didn't dust you off when you gave a bad drive he, he just left it as is and the next week you were back down and hopefully you didn't repeat the same mistake you made before. But that's what I liked about him. And he didn't try to pre-race you to tell you how great they were. You knew, or I knew as a student of the game, that this man had them prepared oh, to the top yeah. of their game. Because he only yeah. raced, Russell, you remember, he only raced them like 20, 25 times a year. When yeah. he would race much more than that. And he had them on their game. When they, when they yeah. went to meet, they were ready. Yeah, no question, because he was he was he was well known uh, for having them trained up. In fact, some might say he trained a little bit too much, and didn't race him out enough. But as a driver, I suspect, well, you were more than happy because you knew the horse wasn't going to be short in any way. So. Yeah. And, and the top 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 notch equipment and just a yeah. super, super, super guy. And, uh, yeah. you know, he supported me. He supported me. You know, the, while I was there the whole time, it was you know, we, we had a lot of good times, a lot of, you know, a lot of. Donnie was kind of a, a fellow like to stay 
to himself, but for some reason, him and I connected. And we, we really had a more than just a, a, a horse relationship. Like I, I would sit in his tack room, which was immaculate. Uh, yeah, I've heard that. Yeah, yeah. Different yeah. afternoons and just pick his just pick his brain and different stuff. I was only young twenties, right? You know, so I wanted to learn everything I could. I was well, that's why that that's why that picture from uh, that picture that Scott just put up. It's a classic picture in in uh, in uh, Atlantic Canada racing, Wally for sure. It's in the book and uh, it's been all through social media. And when Don passed away, it was right at the top of the of the list uh, because it is a great great picture of the both of you. Uh, I think it was from Woodstock. Woodstock. Yeah. yeah. I don't remember. I don't remember the you know you know that at, at that time, but that is Woodstock and. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, that's how I even got to my initial uh, venture to Woodstock was through him, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I love going to Woodstock. I love, I love going to all them small places like that because it was just, it was, it was the, the, the places when we'd go there, the, the crowds and the way they, they, they loved the, the horses and the, and the people that were involved in it was just, it, it was, it was great times. I've heard good things about Woodstock. Yeah, Woodstock's got a good reputation. I was going to mention the John real quick because I feel bad, John. We got you just sitting there. And yeah, I, yeah. Best. <laughs> I, uh, I want to bring up because we talked on the phone. So when you started EPR, well, you told us a story. You came out the apples, sold them to guys. You worked a little bit with the Nicholsons. Did you not, John, for a bit or help them out a little bit? Yeah, no. Before and after school, I was at the barn nonstop. Yeah. And, and initially, initially, it was with the Scovels and McIsaac. Mm -hmm. and then wally showed up about a year later and he would have been the by far the closest to my age at the time yeah and yeah. we kind of clicked in and i remember having to clean out that hay mound when he moved into that burn mm -hmm. and i don't know if you remember Wally, you remember <laughs> that 10 speed that was in the in the hay mound that i couldn't even reach the pedals yeah and yeah. We had our, our, and uh, anyway i uh i kind of migrated towards wally's burn and we we clicked it off my parents liked him so as long as I was around him, I was allowed to stay. And and uh, uh, it's kind of funny, like early when I when actually I was, you guys were talking about old horses. The first horse I ever got to jog myself, uh, John Proud and Toby McDonald tied a, a four by four on the crossbar of the jog cart and let me go out and jog Spring Passage. And I was six years old. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so real quick, and I'll get... I'll keep it moving along, but you said like I'm a big Nicholson guy. I love Bill Nicholson. I think everyone loves Bill Nicholson Senior and B. But you did a little bit of work. You said that uh, you did some work with them back then too, John. Right? With yeah, my best friend was in their barn every day, all the time, and yeah. I'd hang out and and Bill Senior and B like they they like you know, your your kids and yeah. they took your places and and. They always never forget your birthday or Christmas. Oh, and, yeah. Just, and, you know, Bill Jr., like, like the whole family treated, you know, us kids like, you know, like we were theirs. And, yeah. and uh, one thing about growing up at the track, I didn't have two parents. I had dozens of sets of parents. Like, <laughs> yeah, always, exactly. make, always make sure you stayed out of trouble. Yeah. And, I mean, Bill, uh, I mean, I, you'd never hear anyone say a bad thing about Bill Nicholson ever like yeah. just the sweetest man b was adorable i mean b passed away when i was 14 so but i still have a pretty good memory i remember being with b one time at the exhibition for i think it was on the saturday we had a double header so we do the do the afternoon and i would go to the exhibition and wait for the night race and sitting with b she was playing uh i think she was playing roulette or something <laughs> for like three hours and she had me picking numbers but yeah the great people but I, I felt bad john I, we're not trying to leave you out there that's why i wanted to be oh, sure we bring you in there <laughs> um so let's jump in. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring up. We got some pictures that Russell wanted to uh, bring up. Remember Russell, the ones you sent me there. Do you want to bring them up now? Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Whatever's easiest. Yeah. We're just well, gonna just touch on them quickly. Yep. Yeah. Let's hop into it here. We got this one right here for you. You can go ahead with that one, Russell. Yeah. Uh, that was hyped as the 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 uh, two minute mile was finally going to be broken. And as you know, Wally and John, that was a quest that went on for a long time to break that two minute mile. And I was actually at Halifax this day. This is in late June of uh, 1982. And it was one of the best short horse fields I've ever uh, watched. Wally, you had uh, Pennant Play and Saul's Pride came in. And uh, St. John had Columbo Sealster. And uh, Gary McDonald had Maxwell Almahurst. But the horse everybody came to see, including myself, 
who was on a 13 race winning streak and they thought he would break the track record uh, that two minute mile that night was people's blue chip with Dave Pinckney. And uh, they even went to the trouble of having that race on the second race of the Saturday evening card. And during the race, uh, Wally, you and, and uh, Dave Pinkney and Joey Small would get into a battle, each change, taking the lead each time. And guess who was sitting back uh, uh, just waiting to pounce was your, the person you mentioned earlier, uh, Wally, the wizard. And he charged up in the lane and got you at the wire, wire with Colombo Sealster. And that was just a great short horse race short field race and i wonder if you have any recollections of that race wally well honestly russell no honestly good no i, I wish i did i got no yeah. memory i got my memories like you know i've had a few spills right so, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not getting, like I'm, i no. wish i uh when but, i see the picture it's great memories but uh but i have not 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 a bit but it's funny like the fellows you mentioned there and of course i was i was in the battle of course i, I after i got going i liked to Pen and play could leave the gate. That's what yeah. he had to do. And, and uh, he could always get your position. And uh, Colombo was he, – he could leave too as well, but his, the better part of his racing was coming from behind. Yeah. And, uh, who, who better who better than uh, than the Wizard? I think you guys – I think Bo knows this. Uh, when you mentioned the two-minute mile, uh, uh, the Wizard did that in Fredericton. Uh, yeah. I was in the race. Uh, we uh, have that next. Yeah, I was. That's where we're going next. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but but, but Willard Carr was it? He he was he was a character. I, yeah, he, he was a good dude. Yeah. Well, you got the so, second picture, Scott. We'll bring that right up now. No, that's a go back. We'll come back to that one, Scott. Go back to the other one. Yeah, there it is. So uh, you 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 uh, you jumped ahead of me, Wally, because uh, not mm -hmm. many people knew you were in the magical two minute mile when it was finally broken. And uh, that's Clipper, Sealster, and Willard. But you had a sweet little horse called Bay River Mist. Yeah. And my question for that race would be, were you aware, Wally, of what was happening? Because that poor little Bay River Mist was pacing his heart out. And all he was doing was falling farther and farther behind. So you probably, did you have an inkling something special was happening that night? I, I didn't know about the two-minute barrier because it was, you know, that, that was really big back then. But um, the reason nobody seen me is because I was a, about a $10 taxi fare back. You know, that's how far <laughs> back I was. <laughs> Mike Campbell, my cousin who just passed as well. Yeah. God, Mike, he was in there and that, that was big you, right? Big you. Yeah. Yeah. He was brought down to beat the record. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what did. they did. Right. Bo. And, uh, but I, you know, two minute thing was quite a thing. Like, like we tried and tried for years and uh, our horses back then, they probably could, go two minutes before that if if you went all out the whole mile. But whoever went all out the whole mile was not going to be the winner because right. our horse couldn't do it back then. They can yeah. today. They can today, but they couldn't do it. And yeah. uh, Willard, Willard, well, there's how sharp the old fellow was. I think it was 59 and four. And yeah. he was one of the last fellows to ever carry a stopwatch in a race. And he knew. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and you know how poor the lighting was at Fredericton Raceway. I mean, yeah. it was like candle lights. And, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, he's showing the he's showing the the watch to the people that you know that he broke two minutes. And that's a a fifth of a second. That's how that's how great that guy was. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is he holding it up at the wire? Yeah. Yeah. I remember. Yes. Up, yes. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Yeah. Let's, I'm gonna bring it up real and, quick. And, Hold on. Yeah. And you and you know the yeah. other thing about yeah. that race. Well, the other thing about that race, Wally, is normally Willard. He was a great driver of strategy. And normally he would have backed Clipper Sealster off, you know, to a little bit slower half and to win the race. But he knew something special from the temperature that was uh, going on that night and the way horses were dropping their records. I think he knew something special was going on. And, and uh, he did what, what they say in the industry, I guess, is he let Clipper roll on down the highway because he knew he had something special going that night. Yeah. Yeah. Fredericton was ideal for, for, uh, for that. Uh, when you got a nice warm, uh, night in Fredericton, the horses did drop their records, sometimes a second or better, which was big back then. And yeah. uh, it, I remember that's why I love going there as well. I just love Fredericton and because it was a beautiful racetrack and they always treated you well there. Uh, I think Brian Hamilton at the time was the general manager, maybe, maybe yeah. I think he was. And, and um, 
the young fella there was helping him, uh, Waddell. Was it, was it Scott? No, no, who was it? Uh, uh, Scott Waddell. Brent, Brent, Brent Briggs, maybe. Brent, 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 Brent Briggs, yeah, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. Was, Brent, yeah. he was helping them all the time there. And they always treated everybody great. They they, they did. That was that was quite a thing back back then. It was Well, it was the first time. You can't never do anything again. He was the first one. You can't do no. It. And back then, uh, information didn't flow as quickly as it does nowadays. And I can remember uh, getting up the next morning and hearing about it being broken. And, and, all, and everybody who was hearing the story thought it was a misprint. And it was really Columbo Sealster that did it, not Clipper Sealster. Yeah. <laughs> so That's there right. you go. Yeah, um, yeah you're yes. right. That's, uh, <laughs> so also the last one there, the, Colum- the other picture there real quick, Russell? Yeah, definitely. Well, that's that's where I was. That's where I was segueing to. Is everybody thought it was Columbo Sealster that broke the two minute mile, but there's Columbo Sealster there, Wally. And the reason we we chose that picture is that there's uh, some familiar faces in there for you and John, uh, including your old buddy Daryl Pierce, the biggest win of his career, and also holding the horse is somebody that worked with you and John in your stable, and that would be uh, Terry Wilson. And uh, what can you say about Terry and Daryl, except that if I had the money that uh, that they spent on uh, on cigars, I'd be in Florida instead of looking at mm-hmm. this 10-foot snowbank right now. Mm-hmm. So, But uh, that's a great picture of Terry and Daryl there, uh, Wally. And I know that they work uh, with you with you and John. I'll, I'll let Bo uh, handle that one, then, and then I'll chime in on it later. Like, Bo, you, you talk with them fellas, and then I'll well, chime in later. It's kind of ironic. Like, Daryl, we all know he was kind of a wildcat himself there, yeah. you know, forever. <laughs> and he was actually one of the people that were overseeing make sure I stayed out of trouble all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if that was a good thing, but it it did. And, and uh, Terry, me and Terry, we used to fight like married couple there all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you tell me to do something, and I wouldn't. And and uh, but no, me and Terry, we actually shared an apartment together for a long time. And and uh, oh, he he was always a great guy. I was actually going to bring up for you, John. If you want to go ahead, Wall, he would add to that if you want. Then I'm going to show John some pictures that he gave um, me. Well, yeah, I'll be quick about that one. Uh, oh, yeah, Terry, mm-hmm. Terry was uh, well, like you said, he ended up. Uh, you know, I employed him. He uh, what a help he was for me. Imagine I had Bo. I had Wally McGinnis, I had Terry Wilson. Look at the people I had under, and I was only a kid. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and these people were, were actually working for me, and uh, the way that they, you know, helped my career was immensely. You know, uh, but uh, that was with Terry. Uh, we, we, he actually even lived with me for a, sh- a short while. Well, not a short while, a year or two, over in Birdland there in the trailer park. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And um, Daryl Pierce. Now, there's a story. Now, now, not only what he spent on cigars, but what he put through the paramutual windows. <laughs> but, but, but let me tell you this, and then I make no bones about this. This guy, like he had a, a good business going, the plumbing and heating, and and he supported every human being on the backstretch. But yeah. let me tell you something. Daryl Pierce could drive a horse. Yeah. yeah. He could drive a horse. Uh, he was aggressive when nobody else was. That's crazy to say that, but I'm telling you, he was aggressive way before anybody else was, and uh, he always had the best of gear. And he he, he dressed uh, like he, I have nothing but the utmost respect for Daryl. He, he great, great, great guy. Great yeah, guy. yeah, really nice. Yeah, I met him at uh, Montana's that time. We all went to dinner. Me and Russell. Yeah, and, I, 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 yeah, I took Scott and Daryl to introduce Scott to Daryl because. Yeah. Uh, Daryl was coming home. I talk to Daryl every couple of weeks while he's over in the island now, and uh, and yeah, and I and I knew that uh, you would like to see a picture of him and uh, and Terry, so that's why I picked the Columbo Seals to picture. That, that's very nice. They were they were two great guys. We, we had a lot of characters back then, guys. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna bring, we're gonna bring more. money. Mm-hmm. See, that's the thing. It wasn't it wasn't a money deal. Uh, we were surviving. We were all in survival mode, and and. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing, like the respect amongst one another, because we all knew that we had to work as hard as we could and try to do what we could do just to survive. And it was, it was yeah. great times. No, it was, uh, well, I remember just being a fan as a kid. I came probably, I actually, uh, we're going to get to that race in a minute. I'm going to show John some pictures that John sent me. And I'm going to actually just go through a few pictures here. I think this is you and Wally. Is my correct, John? Right yeah, here? Wally's Canadian elephant. 
That's what it is, a Canadian Hall of Fame. Okay, because I was, uh, I think I, I might have creeped your Facebook and found that. <laughs> so I might have took that without your permission, but I just went through. So, and here's another picture, John. Like, let's see, is that you and your son there at the yeah, Panthers yeah, game? That's me, me and my son, yeah. Okay, so you guys are Panthers fans. For like, uh, yeah, I'm a big sports guy. I'm a, I'm a Kansas City fan right now. So I'm yeah, not too can you bring that other part. picture up for a second, Scott? Yeah, can you bring sure. that other? No, no, the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I did. I didn't really notice John and his son, but who, who was that again? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. My son Jonathan and cheerleaders <laughs> for the Panthers. Um, let's show a couple. Of, I got a really cool picture you sent me. Where's it at? I have it all set up for me. Where's it at? It's hiding. No, that's not it. That one there's that that's you and your wife. Am I correct, John? Yep, yep. That's okay. Michelle and and to date are still our favorite horse source of luck. Okay, awesome. Oh, yeah. Where was where was that taken at, John? That was at Pompano Park. Uh, okay. Uh, it was actually for an article they had wrote about me, Michelle, and that horse. And I have a really this is a really cool picture that you sent me. Like, this is your son here when he was a kid, and I can relate to this big time. That's a really nice picture of your son <laughs> yeah. with the uniform on, yeah. And I can relate to that as a little boy. Like when I was a little boy, I followed my father around that racetrack, like just like nonstop. So I get that. That's a really nice little picture. Um, yeah, you no, know, they grew up at the track from day one and and uh uh, they're always with us. They learned independence because of it, because, you know, I built a nice deck, you know, where they couldn't get out of it, had all their toys. And so, you know, you go running if you hear them, but, you know, they learned independence and to do stuff for themselves when we were busy working. Yeah, exactly. And for kids, I mean, there's something about that. I mean, I know for myself, and I'll tell you, and then I'll jump back into a few more pictures. I was at the track last summer and I seen this, it was a state a race. This little boy was just losing his mind as far as I was racing. And it like flashed me back to like 1983. I mean, just lose my mind. My father was racing. So I, it's a big thing for kids when their parents race. I mean, it's a, it's a real big thing. Um, let's show one more here and then I'm going to jump back in. Let's see here. Where are we at? No. Oh, oh, that's you. Okay. Now who's in this picture here? John? That's, that's Michelle. Uh, they were doing a, a promo thing with the little mini horses and okay. she was she was the driver i was her groom that day oh, uh, that's awesome and then my son and my daughter awesome awesome picture okay um let's go through i'm gonna go through a couple more here give me a second i'm just trying to keep track where i'm at okay so i'm gonna jump into penaplay because you mentioned penaplay quickly wally and i have a video of it can you go kind of just give us a background a little bit on penaplay with your feelings towards that horse something like that yeah, yeah, he was uh, he was the first one that uh, an invitational, real top invitational horse that that I got the chance to drive, and it was only through um, uh, Frankie Fagan had been driving him out of Moncton, New Brunswick, and I don't know what happened to Frankie. He he just stopped driving, or or for some reason I don't know. Mm -hmm. But uh, Romeo Boucher, Alain Bergeron, I think it's Bergeron something. He he. Um, he, uh, they, they approached me and said it was, um, one of the series there in St. John. If I, I would have be a video, yeah. yeah, yeah, if I'd be interested in driving them, what, what was I going to say? No, <laughs> 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 so, I'm gonna, come on. Yeah. and he was, he, he was, he was, he was the one that put me on the planet, yeah. you know, Atlantic, because I got to travel around with him. That, that was yeah. big. I have a cool video here. It's a Labatt Blue Series, 1982. This was shot. I'm going to give a prop out to my uncle Tim Ryan because he actually shot this on the grandstand. And it's kind of neat because you're getting the atmosphere of EPR. I love all the old races, but this is like right in the grandstand. This is the finals of the Labatt Crown Series, and this is the last quarter. And you can't really hear Ingham too well. If the whole video is on YouTube, by the way, so people take a look, they can hear Ingham. That's I know it's not you can't really hear it. <laughs> if you watch the full video, you can actually hear Ingham, but at the last second, what I love about that video is the crowd because everyone's losing their minds. Um, but that was the Labat Crown series with uh Penaplay. So that was when you won that one, yeah, in nineteen eighty two, which is uh, pretty neat. Who's also... cheering? They, they didn't know who they wanted. First they wanted Colombo, then they wanted Wally. 
I think I think my uncle was cheering for you because I know that man's voice anywhere, and he was oh. getting pretty excited when you won. But there was a girl who was I think was rooting for for a seal, Plumble Sealster, yeah. So it's a pretty. I found that Steve Mahar gave me a stack of videos, and that was in it. And uh, then my uncle Tim had told me, oh, he's like I recorded from like 1980 to like 83, a bunch of ones. I'm like really, you got them? No, I threw them out. I'm like story of my life. People threw them out. Everyone throws out their tapes. Um, you get. Fine. I'd be fine to death if I ever was whipping like that today. I, it was, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> when I see videos like that, I, I, I'm kind of embarrassed because I don't know. Uh, just, it was a time too. Yeah, different times. It was. It was different times. It was different. Yeah. Times. You know. I mean, yeah. you know, I put the 74, I think I had the 74 Alexander. Yeah. And you, you can see it. I mean, it's, we don't look back and judge anyone on that. You're not doing it anymore. You follow no, us. No, you know. no, yeah, no. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one more video, and then we're going to jump into another one here. This is the one we talked about on the phone, Wally, about the interview when you guys did Provincial Cup. Remember, we were talking about when oh, you guys did, and they had, <laughs> I don't know if it's going to embarrass you, but I think it's funny. I don't mean to embarrass you, but this is your interview. Once the parade's over, it's just like you talk, You guys are talking into like a mic or something. So this is a couple of seconds long. Here it is. I wrote things tonight. Thank you. Hi, racing fans. I'm Wally Hennessy. The best I've been in a cup race before was a second with Pen of Play to McGarrett Inn in two minutes. That's a thrill I'll always remember. Romeo Boucher and Elaine Bergeron have worked hard with this horse, getting him back in a tip-top shape. We won our last start, although most think we were in plenty tough. Don't count us out, especially if we're handy at the head of the lane. Thanks for your support, and good luck to the other drivers. I just thought that was fun to put in there. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, uh... that one I watched. I don't know how I got that because I'm not on Facebook. Uh, I think my wife, Barb, pulled it up. Mm -hmm. and um, I watched the whole thing, and, and, and every driver got to do that kind of promo. Yep, yeah. kind of thing. And uh, John Hogan, who became – one of my best best friends, Bo, Bo's best friend as well. Like Bo's wife actually worked for John for a couple of years, and uh, to hear his voice back then because he had won it with Truman or Hillbilly or either or, but he yeah, said Truman, his greatest, yeah. thrill, his greatest thrill at that time. Imagine, yeah. he, and he was called the King of New England at that time, and he said yeah. the best thrill and the best he was ever treated was the year before uh, when he won it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It says a lot. It says a lot for your father-in-law because he gets like, you know, a lot of credit goes yeah. to Doug Caldwell. Because I mean, yeah. you know, Absolutely. for a guy that took that, I, I'll be really quick because I won't keep too much of this. But I, I do a lot of research on the history of EPR. I mean, yeah, it was going good in the '40s, but like he brought it to that next level. Like you know, he took it to like making it. He was brought the best horses here, had the big purses. So he, you know, he deserves a lot of credit for that. He really does. And people do give him credit, but I think he deserves a lot more because he did a lot for that that racetrack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd like to come in on that because, of course, he's my father-in-law. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, well, I didn't know what what Exhibition Park was prior to my arrival, so I can't really give a a, a statement or a synopsis or whatever mm -hmm. on what it was like beforehand. But Doug, th that that was his show, and uh, he was proud of it, and he worked very, very hard there. And uh, I'll tell you. Um, while I was there, uh, what what his thing was, he wanted the best in harness racing in Atlantic Canada to, to be at St. John, New Brunswick, mm -hmm. and, and he succeeded. Yeah. I mean, we, 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 they called us the giant uh, of maritime harness uh, at the oh, time. Yeah. And uh, he really did. He, he did. He worked hard, and he was my greatest supporter. He was the man that got me to come down to Florida, actually. I, uh, I was, I was going to not come. Uh, I was already, uh, I was in St. John at the end there and, and uh, I was getting cold feet and he was my father-in-law and he was the one that uh, said, uh, you never know till you try. And I, I said, I can't go. And he said, give it a go. If, if, if it doesn't work, you can always come home. Mm -hmm. And then great, great man. He, he was, he, he was uh, for me, for me, my greatest supporter. Yeah. No, I heard that story. I think I heard that in an interview you did before, definitely about the Florida thing. We'll get into Florida here in a few in a minute. Definitely, we'll talk about you and John going down there. Um, Russell, I think we're going to go through a couple pictures here, and I'm going to go over some pictures too. But you go ahead. Actually, I'm going to go over a couple pictures, and I'll bring you in, Russell, because I got a few okay. here for um, I got a couple for Wally here. Here's uh, with John Davies, Burners Delight, the Walter Dale. What's the remembers? Do you remember John Davies there, Wally? Oh, John was tremendous. Oh yeah, 
No, <laughs> again. How can I keep going back and saying the same things over and over? But there's Brian <laughs> and uh, Brian was a general manager. John Davies put me on more winners than any trainer at, at Exhibition Park Raceway. John yeah. Davies did. He put yeah. a lot of people in the winner circle. I, I mean, nobody won any more races than John Davies. And yeah. I was just getting going then. And he seen it and gave me the chance. And uh, he, he, he was just great. Like, that was a horse there that he got at a New England that was just just an ordinary horse. And then he started winning all the invites around the, you know, around yeah. the he, he got him. Chris told me that I was talking to his son. Chris gave me some of the pictures and said that he got him for basically nothing, and then his boom made it up. Um, right here, this is you when I think this is 81 or eight. This is probably 81 because I, I tell by the toe port. <laughs> That's how I figure out what year it is. The toe port kind of gives it away. So I think it's like 81. You win driver of the year. I don't know who else is in the Willard cars right here. Russell, can you gather up who's the second person? Yeah, that's that's uh, that's Willer. That's Willer winning for maybe for percentage. Wally for dash wins, and of course uh, Doug on the far right. And yeah. I'm pretty sure that 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 must be Bruce McDonald, maybe winning Rookie of the Year. Yeah, that'd be my guess. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I'm not totally sure. We'll definitely get our uh, answer if we don't have it because they'll put it on when this goes on Facebook. We'll get our answer pretty quick from. Yeah, Patrick. no, I think I'm pretty sure that's Bruce. Bruce winning Rookie of the Year. Yeah, definitely. And we got a couple other ones here. Did this you see nice. the pay? Did you see the pay in that horse back there? Look, look at the winner. What he paid. Look at the background. <laughs> wow. Yeah, thirty-two. 32? Yeah, 32. look at that. You're lucky you got a tractor like that. I want a tractor back in the two eight and one, two oh eight and one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at that. That is. I'll, I'll tell you, it's funny. I got the the twenty. I had uploaded um a card from December twenty second, nineteen eighty four, and they were going like two seventeen. Two eighteen. It was like all muddy. It was hilarious listening to it. Uh, driver of the year. This is you winning that, Wally, with your father-in-law handing you the trophy right there. Driver of the year. Uh, that's nineteen eighty-three. Yeah. This one here. We have April Power, Linda Woods horse, and I oh. love Linda <laughs> Wood. I love Linda. Love Aubrey. Like can't get nicer people than them too. Yeah, the, the, well, Aubrey was one of the first guys I, I ran into uh, when I came off the boat. Mm -hmm. um, he had Ralph McFadgen's horses, and um, I had had Ralph McFadgen's horses on the island. So he was one of the first guys I ran into. And uh, oh, what lovely people! I, th I think that was Jackie in the background too. Like, Let's uh, take a look here. I'll bring yeah, up. yeah, Jackie. that is Jackie. Yeah, that's Jackie in the background. Yeah, and, yeah. and Linda, Linda, uh, like she, uh, poor Aubrey and Linda had to put up with me up in the Golden Grove. There, I wouldn't <laughs> go to sleep, wouldn't go home. I'd be <laughs> at their house and. <laughs> I, I stayed a few nights overnight at that place. Yeah. Oh, Aubrey's, and I'll, I'll give Aubrey 80. I always tell him, Aubrey, you're 85, turn to 30. Because he, yeah. he's not, oh, he's not slowing, not slowing down. Yeah. Not slowing down at all. Um, I was looking at that picture and I had a laugh to myself because, uh, Russell, you might remember this. I know Wally does, but there was a bad accident in St. John and Jody had one of Wally's bikes <laughs> and Gordy had one of Wally's bikes. And Wally was in his own bike, and they're all wrecked. So he's, Bo, run over to the barn and get my blue bike. I said, Wally, you got wrecked. No, no, my blue bike. I said, Wally, you just got wrecked. <laughs> I said, the blue bike. You know the damn blue bike. I said, Tony Hag borrowed it for this race. So all four of his race bikes in one shot was gone. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bad night. That yeah. is. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh -huh. Russell is real bad when you only own one of them. It were, the others were owned by the owners. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was real bad. And and what about me the next day? Um, what about, uh, well, I hate to tell you this, but uh, uh, we don't have a bike anymore. So, <laughs> and, and sometimes back, sometimes back then, Wally, the bike was worth more than the horse that broke it. Oh, well, well the deal about <laughs> that funny bow brought that up. I remember that race. That's one thing I do remember. Boyd Tremere was on the front, and we were coming around the last turn, and the, the, the start before. Or, or going around the first time, first half, the uh, uh, saddle pad, saddle number come off one of the horses. And when we come around the seven eights, Boyd's horse jumped it. Man, oh man. We all went down. And my brother Gordy was in there as well. I was down. Everybody was down, Gordy. And I remember Gordy over the side, you know, trying to explain what happened. And I was looking at him and I thought, Gord, you know, are you okay? I go over and I'm trying to dust myself off. I go over and see Gord. I say, you okay? Yeah. He says, why? Why are you asking? He had his glasses on. 
both both yeah. both parts of the glass. All it was on him was the frames. Both glass. <laughs> he, had the, he had the frames, and he didn't even know he hit them on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that's pretty wild. Both I remember. <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, just a couple more pictures, and I'll hop back in. This is. Um, did I get to this one? Gemini Riss went into Walter Dale from 83. Yeah. That one there. And then we have... I just don't want to go too quickly. So I'm going to... If, if you want to see another picture of Wally or Russell or John, just tell me. I'll go back to it. I got them over here. And then we have the Roof and Burial from 1983. And what else have I got here? And that's good for now. We'll kind of jump in. We'll show some more pictures here in a little bit. Um, let me go back to our format here and see where we're at. I remember John Davis... Uh, you wanted to mention another owner to Wally, correct there, Russell? Well, it, actually another trainer owner, and it's somebody yeah. that uh, I don't know if you knew this or not, Wally, but he got his start with John Davies, and then he uh, migrated to the States, and I, I talked to him and his wife every month, and I know that you and John run into him once in a while, and that's Art Green. And oh, yeah, uh, I yeah. think, it, yeah, and Art, gave you, Art gave you some drives in the early 80s, too, when he had a stable here before he went back down to Foxborough. Um, and, I, and I want to mention him because uh, he's a good friend that I talked to. Plus, it's his birthday, so maybe we can all wish him happy birthday today as well. So, happy birthday, Art, because I know yeah, he'll tune uh, in. Happy Wally. birthday, buddy. <laughs> happy birthday. But let, let Bo kind of talk a little bit about Art there, because uh, like yeah. Bo was over to Monticello a lot. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's right. Yeah. The last dozen years, I have seen Art in a lot between Poconos. His, his better horses, he'd take over to Poconos and and uh, his weaker ones, like he always kept a big stable at uh, Monticello. And uh, his okay. health didn't wasn't very good there about three years ago, and he cut way back down. But I, I would run into him like every week, you know, either at Monticello or Pocono. Yeah. Yeah, he's got seven now, and he, he was down to four. But there, he's still plugging away and having having some pretty good success. So, Yeah, no, yeah. He's, there's a the guy. He could Band-Aid up anything, like, you know. <laughs> Good horsemen, just it didn't matter what it was. Somebody else wants to Amish it, and he'd be out winning a couple weeks later with it. Yeah, and I think Wally, when you talked about John Davies with that Burner's Delight, I believe that Art was was somewhat responsible for sending that horse to right. to getting John to get that horse from Foxborough. Yes, I, I don't know the the, the uh, you know the particulars in it, but I'll, I'll know. But it was owned there by a a, a big owner in uh, New England, and you're yeah. right. Art, Art hooked John up with the guy, and that's kind yeah. of how that yeah. all came about. Yeah, yeah. Art's a great guy. He, ne you know, he never changed. He's still the same. No. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, and he's another guy too, uh, Wally, that you mentioned earlier. Uh, no matter if you just like Don Galbraith, uh, you you drove his horse, and if it, and if you won, great. If you didn't win, he wouldn't beat you up, and he and he just use you next week, and maybe have a little bit better luck. Most of the guys back then were that way. Yeah. So we're going to bring up, uh, cause actually everybody has, me and Russell were talking about this, me and John were talking about this actually, about the horse match jets. And I have a little video, which is I'll explain the video when we get into it. But um, we're going to let John start, because John, you worked with, uh, when Wally had match jet, you worked with match jet, am I correct? Yeah, yeah. Back then, Wally had a pretty stellar group for St. Mm -hmm. John back then. Like It would have been Glenn Cross and Gemini Greenwood and match jet, uh, Olamite Irish, like you know, they were just all uh, good, hard-hitting horses. And and then I seen through your videos that your dad had ended up with Matt's Jet at one yep. point. And, and uh, I, I remember clear, like, what his head looked like. Because he <laughs> always had that sleek look on his head. Uh, he yep. wasn't like a, a big, rugged horse. But he, uh, uh, back then, like, Wally well, had, you know, the best of the best in St. John yeah. at that time. Yeah, I got a cool video, and we'll let Russell get into that too, because I'm gonna let everybody tell their thing about what Match Jet. I got like a video, to other like last quarter of the race. So your memories of Match Jet, Russell, because you had a friend who you were friends with the owners, correct? Yeah, I I always uh, I was I was great friends with Billy Stevens and Pat Driscoll, and we're gonna give another shout out because it's Pat Driscoll's birthday today as well. So oh, Art birthday. Green and Pat Driscoll had the same birthday. So. Uh, but no, I was great friends with them. And uh, the connection that all four of us have with the horse is, is John, you used to look after the horse. Wally, you had him for a couple of years driving him and had a lot of success. I was uh, great friends with his owners. And then uh, a few years later, Scott's father had matched Jet in Ferrington for, for the season. 
Yeah. And uh, Pat and I went up one day, and uh, Terry was busy in the barn and uh, and said uh, he had Mass Jet all ready to go out and jog. So he said, uh, he said, Pat, you should take this horse out to jog. Well, Pat wasn't going anywhere near a horse. So <laughs> he said, well, well, Russell, can you jog him for me? I got a lot to do here. And I'm like, what are you talking about, me? I said, geez, I said, uh, the number of horses I sat behind in my career, you could count on one hand with good reason. I had the athletic uh, athleticism and coordination of a drunken toddler, but Terry just said, "Oh no, no, Russell, you you go, you just go out that door and go through that gate and go six or seven times around, and he'll find his way back." <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm happy to report that um, that 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 classy old campaigner got uh, got me and him back to the barn in one piece, and uh, and I I just have greatest admiration for horses that. Uh, that raced until they were 14 years old. And he yeah. did fellas. He raced until yeah. he was 14 years old. And because of my friendship with his owners, I insisted to Scott that we put him on this show because I knew yeah. you guys would remember him as well. Go ahead, Bo. You remember Bo. You already mentioned about him, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, no. I brought up about, you know, he had a sleek head on him. He wasn't a heavy built horse, but you know, I remember clear when he was in the barn with all the other ones. That's why I, that, that this, show that you guys put on all the time and you you keep adding to it uh, yeah. it's so cool watching that and then you see the names of these horses and it just it brings you right back to that day yeah. things that yeah. you haven't thought about in 20 years and you start hearing the names or when you're when you're taking pictures of, of results and stuff it, yeah. it just brings it right back yeah i love it i do the thing um i'm gonna bring up a video quickly of matt's jet which but I, i'll tell you about the results i did a thing with the i'll give my way my secret See, so, you know, if you notice the last like week or so I've been doing the history, this day in history, I got like, I, I actually set them up like months before where I have it all set up every day. It drops at 9 a.m. So I love doing it. It's great. I love the history of it. So this right here, quick video, Match Jet with Wallaway. So you're driving Wallaway Spats, Wally. My father's driving Match Jet. Oh, Wallaway. Oh. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you got memories of that horse? You want to bring that up before we show the video? Oh. oh. <laughs> I'll give you a second. You're cutting out oh, a little bit on me. I won't, I won't put him in my top ten of all time. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. I'm gonna throw this in, and I'll just I'll, I'll promote myself. If you watch this video, if you see when they kind of pan out, there's the fence. And there's this little kid jumping up and down. You're looking at him. That's me. I'm like I'm like seven. <laughs> so here it is. Here it's a quick one. Then it is P. H. Erlane, a white jet queen, Vasey Lucky, and Mountain Burb trails. And now Willoway Spats has gone to the top, and Matt's Jet goes after him. Matt's Jet up on the outside, racing to second, and they are by the three quarters now and swinging on into the top turn. Willoway Spats, Matt's Jet driving up second, moving on the leader. America's favorite on the rail is a third. They were by the three quarters, 42 and 2. Coming to the 7 8th, Willoway Spats has the lead. On the outside, Matt's Jet and America's favorite, and they come swinging home. It is Willoway Spats and Matt's Jet. Willoway Spats on the inside, Matt's Jet on the outside, neck and neck as they come to the wire, and here they are. Willoway Spats and Matt's Jet, then tight for third. Looks like America's favorite and P.H. Early. Time for the mile, 216 and 3. What makes me two sixteen and three? That's the funny part. <laughs> like muddy track night. That was December twenty second, eighty four. The last race of the day. And I love you, Wally. But I'll tell you, I wasn't a big fan. Probably that last second when you beat my father. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, well, no, it was. Okay. Uh, hey, Wally, Wally. Wally. Go ahead, Wally. Yeah. yeah, no, that that owner there, his wife there, thought that was the greatest horse oh in the my world. God. She loved and it. he was a big, oversized kind of. Doofus. <laughs> clumsy. He, was, he was clumsy and she would walk into her stalls like just for the nines. And oh, I didn't care because the, the guy that owned him was a great guy. He'd give me, I was just a little kid then, $50 tip when that horse won. And I thought mm. it was like the biggest thing in the world. Well, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's uh, a lot of money, man. Yeah. You, you couldn't get $20 for the day, let alone $50 tip when that horse won. Yeah. That's for Carton Brothers. He owned that fellow, Lloyd. Lloyd uh, what, McAllister. Lloyd, Lloyd, Lloyd McAllister, wasn't it? Yeah. 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 yeah he owned. Uh, or I didn't think. I don't think he owned it alone, but it was. Tr tr no, it was. Brian, I think Brian Spite owned him for a short time too, oh, Wally. They were partners. They were. Yeah. Partners. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But but anyway, <clears throat> I got a little choked up. 
not because of Willow Ray Spatz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 well, I don't know who was judging that night, but y- you see, you see what I did to your poor father, Scott, don't you? You gave, uh, you gave no. him a little bit of carry there. <laughs> if, you watch, yeah. if you watch off the last turn, yeah. I wasn't real tight to the fence. Uh, no, okay. <laughs> I, was, I was using a little strategy back then. That's <laughs> all good. Yeah. I'll, I'll forgive you for it. <laughs> so, last thing before we jump into the U.S., this is a. I think you might have seen this, Wally, but this is kind of, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna show it. It's it's a quick thing, and it's you. You're with Dan's Taverns. Dan is the horse. This is 1985. Because my father's also in this race. Something a little strange happens in this race. Now we're gonna play it, and you're gonna notice this angle's gonna stop talking. And just watch the whole video. It's about a minute long. It's it's pretty pretty funny. Joe Mac, Brandy Phillips, Chip Along Antelope, Stan Nelson, Taverns, Dan Walling, Hennessy, Rustley Master, Steve Mason, the trailer is Adios Julie with Terry Bernard, and here they come. Clear off, brother Smoothie goes quickly to the top, and then from the fur outside, Rustley Masters driving up wide. Out of the turn, brother Smoothie. Jill Mack is now second. Casey Jam third. Jill Mack is now the leader as they go racing by the eighth, and she shows the way up the back stretch. Jill Mack is moved out now by a two lengths. Then. Uh, That's Rustley Master in trouble. And here they are to the wire. Brother Smoothie, Mary Wood Lee, legitimate power. Casey Jam, time for the mile. Two, six, and three. And parading now, the winner of the third race, number three, Brother Smoothie, Chestnut Horse, eight by Kessler Hanover. From I'm a Smoothie Wick, going by Orville Puddle Solari, Prince Edward Island, trained and driven by Marcel Barrio. Your winner in two, six, and three. Well, you're wondering what happened to Rustley Master. We're going to show you there. He went right through the big white fence, right through out onto the Golden Grove Road. So that's... And by the way, no one was hurt. The, the horse was fine. Steve who Mason was fine. Who who Steve that? Mason. I think it was Steve oh Mason. Driving. We could see him getting a little bumpy around the corner there, the first corner. Well, I think he went right towards the, 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 to, towards the uh, car because you can see him kind of veering off a little bit. Must and then... Choked. He must have choked. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, Kyle Mesa had him on. He told me about it. But I just wonder because you were in that race. You, might, you don't remember that. You must not remember that. No, then, eh? no not that's... at all. But there's Pops winning again, Marcel, like, yeah. you know, and train yeah. and driven, you know, Pops. Yeah. He won a lot of races there, guys. A lot of we got races. some, we got a really, we got a really cool picture later on the way we're going to end the podcast. So we're going to jump in. Uh, unless you want to say anything, Russell, I'm going to hop into his US and then get him and John involved there. Do you got anything you want to add to this? Uh, maybe I'll bring in the part. I'll I'll plug the book. I'll plug the book again, Wally. Here we go. Driven yeah. to win. And when you made your way down the to the U.S. after you, you and your brother Danny and uh, and uh, had a stable going, um, not many. I didn't know this, and maybe not everybody else does, but they will if they read the book. Uh, you had probably the most recognizable name in harness racing as an owner, and uh, no, it wasn't uh, Charlie Price. Mm-hmm. It was uh, it was somebody else, and maybe you can kind of fill the viewers in on who the that person was who had retired, but entrusted I think a couple of horses to to your stable. Yeah, that that was that was uh, the Hennessy's uh, biggest endorsement ever in harness racing. Uh, yeah. I don't know what year it was; it was back about ten, fifteen years ago. But uh, Stanley Dancer, uh, considered by many, if not all, the greatest horseman trainer driver breeder everything yeah. uh, of all yeah. time he still mentioned today like every time you yeah. know, he mentioned stanley dancer and he only had a couple left and his partner was the hall of fame uh pitcher whitey ford oh that's yeah. cool yeah that's awesome. and yeah. uh and he had that's he had two horses left they were partners and uh the guy the, the stall guy at the time was bobby owens he come over and he said uh Wally Stanley Dancer wants you to take his last two horses. And I said, he, he doesn't want me, Bobby. You must you, you must have mistaken. And he goes, no. And I said, well, I, I don't think I'm the guy for him because I, I didn't feel that I, I, I deserved that. And uh, 
Anyway, Bobby said, well, all right, I'll go back and see what he says. And he, Bobby came back the next day and he says, uh, if, if you want them, he wants you to, he really wants you, you me and my brother, Dan. Yeah. And they were his, they were his last horses that, that not, I, I had them for a couple of years, but uh, he'd come to the barn and I was just like, you know, when, when he'd come in, like, you know, he was just, he was like, he had, he had a, he had an aura about him. Bo will tell you that what, what he did for people and how he made people feel. And he always had time for everybody. And uh, he just, just a great, great guy. But it was the biggest endorsement of, of Dan and I's career by million, million miles, million miles. Awesome. You so, say something about that ball because you know Stanley well. Yeah. Go yeah, ahead. So, uh, I first met him over on the training side there. I was working for somebody else at the time. And he asked me one day, do you know Tom Scoville? And yeah. back in the day, the second trainers drove to the other end of the entry for the boss and they did heat it with a Stanley dancer trained entry one day at some track and it was a world record. Well, the next time dancer went back to that track, the track presented him with a trophy part and it, it was as tall as the back seat of my car was long. <laughs> nice. And he said, he told me when it was time to head back North, will you see Tom? I said, yeah. He says, take this to him. And he, and he brought it in. And he says, I had this for 40 some years. He can have it for the next 40 some years. And I took it up the gate <laughs> and gave it to him. But Stanley, like he was just a regular guy, uh, just nice to everybody. I asked him for an autograph graph whip one day and he told me, come over to the barn. So I go over to the barn, his last winning drive, lifelong victory at Garden State. He pulls the whip off the wall and gives mm -hmm. me the picture with it. Nice. Mm. And like he had it all taped up, yellow and blue, and and yeah. that's the whip he was holding that day in the winter circle. Nice. Yeah. So I, I have a question for you, uh, for John. When Wally went to the United States, did you go with them right away, or did you? I think we talked about it a bit, but we can tell the people that are listening. How did no, that go when Wally went? No, initially I left St. John because Wally had too many horses in St. John, mm -hmm. and he set Gordy up in Fredericton. Yeah. And Wally's version of it, he sent us a bunch of winners and we sent them back a bunch of tired horses. <laughs> and lame ones. <laughs> and lame ones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so then that was the year I, I was 15 that summer. And Gordy moved on to the new front of Downs at the time, Champlain Raceway. And I went with Gordy to, to Moncton. Well, I left uh, uh, a year later. I went with uh, 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 to work for Marcel Burial in Montreal. Okay. And, and uh, I was working for Marcel. Well, I, when I returned in the summertime to the Maritimes, Mike McDonald called me and asked me if I would go to Minnesota with his wow. horse. And so I jumped on that. And uh, Wally went to Florida then. That's when Wally first went to Florida. Okay. Yeah. And then the next year I went to Florida to work with Wally. Great. No, that's awesome. That's good. That's it. The Minnesota thing is very interesting. That's really cool. I went to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Fight yeah. So Wally, jumping into the going to the U.S. I, I've watched interviews with that. I've done some research. Um, like you, you obviously mentioned earlier, you were kind of on the fence. You didn't really want to go, but Doug definitely. How was it when you first went? Like, kind of just break it down a little bit. What happened when you first went? Went to Florida, yeah. correct? Yeah. Uh, just like my first few drives of, of my career, uh, it was like I was starting over again. Uh, mm -hmm. It was very nerve wracking, even though I had been a, a leader in Atlantic Canada when I landed down in Southern Florida in my own mind. Uh, and I, I suppose in most people's mind, because that was way before Internet and cell phones. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And everything else. Nobody really kind of knew me. And I, even if they did, that wouldn't mean much. But uh, I didn't really have the power. See, I took I took the horses from Atlantic Canada that were they, they were the top horses up there or some of them were. Mm -hmm. And I had great support from them owners to just, you know, to send them with me. And that, that gave me my start, but <clears throat> it was tough. I, I was starting all over again. It was, yeah. you know, at 20, 29, I, I was starting all over again. Uh, and uh, I, I didn't, um, you know, it, it, I didn't know whether I was going to make it or fail, but I want to give it a chance. Mm -hmm. And um, just uh, later on in that it was only about a five month meet then around February or March, I kind of started to get some live drives. And uh, then it was a, a the, the race secretary. Then his name was Warren DeSantis. 
he's since passed as well just recently man they're all passing away but mm. anyway uh uh he 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 saved my career because he got me to go to saratoga he was going to be the general manager he was taking over and he wanted new, new faces new blood and uh he asked me to go and, and me and dan and uh, Bo came along there too like it was good you know and and our horses fit in there like a glove like really did and it just kind of that's the way it went we flip-flopped saratoga pompano for years mm -hmm. and i apologize for my voice it's got a, i kind of got you're a, fine don't even worry about no you sound great don't worry about it all you're fine cold. i got a half a cold here so. no no you're you sound fine no worries no worries yeah. um but yeah because i know i i I think I've watched a few videos of you and it's like, uh, I knew that, you know, you had, at first it was a little bit rough, but then once you get rolling, I mean, it's, it's, I think you're almost a natural for driving. So once you get into that groove, you were good to go. I'm going to show another video in a second. Do you have anything you want to add to that, Russell, before I show the Breeders' Crown video? No, uh, it's just, uh, when we get into these uh, U.S., uh, it's it's funny, Well, you talked about when you came to EPR and looked up to all the uh, senior drivers and senior horsemen here, do you see the the way think things have come full circle, and now you're you know in the in the senior uh, driver, yeah, and you have all these young guys coming to uh, to try and take your top spot in Florida? Um, is there any kind of similarities to what you went through that you see them going through? Well, I, I can't you know I can't go in their brain or you know say to uh, how they feel, but I, I do know they treat me with. The utmost respect to all you know all the drivers and all the especially the Good. young folks they do they do wrestle yeah they do ask Good. me questions i don't know whether they listen to me or not <laughs> but, but uh, they, do, they do ask me and uh i tell you they're they're tough uh you got you got to be on your a game uh i've never ever felt comfortable like as far as uh comfortable of my accomplishments uh, I, I i just feel like i have uh I have to pro prove myself nightly on a nightly basis. Bo will tell you, it, like it doesn't take much. You, you slip for a week or two, uh, all of a sudden uh, on the uh, on the entry sheet, the, your, your name's not there. So, but it, having said that, Russell, uh, yes, they, uh, but it's not just the young guys. It's the, it's what what means the most to me is not the younger people, which I truly respect. What means the most to me as a driver is the guys that I raced against in my 30s, 20s, late 20s, 30s, and 40s, who have since retired from driving. I haven't. Yeah. They still train, and they list me to drive. So that's your peers using mm -hmm. you. So that, that, that's, a, that's a huge, huge endorsement. Huge. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So I am going to go ahead and show to you, Wally. This is Breeders' Crown 1998. You're with Moneymaker. We'll definitely get into Moneymaker for sure. And the way I do it is I, this is kind of fun because I do, you've probably seen it on YouTube. We'll just show the video, but I imagine you've seen it on YouTube. So this is Breeders' Crown 1998. I think, is this in the Meadowlands or am I missing something here? I think it's in the Meadowlands. Let's take a look. We'll find out when we get in. Attention, Beth. They're by three quarters, and it's still Moneymaker, the one to catch. Three quarters and one, 25 and one. Three sixteenths to go, and they're on their way home. And it's Moneymaker. She leads it by two. Georgia Limited second. And the middle of the track, late trot from Super High Test. In deep stretch. Here's a superstar moneymaker. She's done it again. World champion. She wins the Breeders' Crown in 152 and 3. Gary Moneymaker needed that last start. She was very impressive, although she did finish second. What a performance uh, this afternoon. Shows just how dominant a trotter this champion is. Great performance. Now back down to you. All right, John, and Moneymaker, the queen, ties the stakes record in the Breeders' Crown set. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Who have you got here, world-class Wally? Well, this is my daughter, Christy. This is my good luck charm. She came down. She came over today. She, she said, you're going to win today, Daddy. Okay, as we take a look at it at the top of the stretch or around the... So I give your daughter a little props there, too. Well, I think you'd like that. See, I no. see. You've probably seen that on YouTube. They've That's all over Not YouTube. Really? Then. No, no. Really? I no. What I could do, I'll let you know, too, before... Uh, I mean, once we're done... Well, if anyone I do stuff well, I can send you some of this stuff too if you want to your email. I'll let your wife know and then you can take yeah. have it for yourself. But yeah, so we can um I mean moneymakers obviously a huge deal for you if you want to kind of get into that a little bit and then we can move on to that. Whatever you want to do. 
oh well that was my career you know yeah. uh, um you know a lot of great horses you know when you when you when you have the longevity that that i've had you know you get opportunities to drive a lot of good horses bad horses and but but yeah. she's she's on a pedestal all by herself there's and that, and i'm going back now that was 20 some years ago yeah 98 yeah 98, yeah, 97, no. yeah i think she raced to 2000 i think i think she well i I can tell you her awards real quick if you want. Uh, Horse of the Year, 1998-99. Trotter of the Year, 98-99-2000. Four-time Trotter of the Year Mayor, or Trotter Mayor, 97-2000. In 1996, won 19 of 20 stars, won the first 18 straight. So Wow. Wow. Uh, and and if, you, you know, if you watch that video, that's just how dominant she was. Like, you know, he just said that she tied the record. He, he, she, she could have smashed it. I mean, that yeah. was, you know... And, 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 and that was a girl racing against guys. That doesn't happen. You know, she, yeah. they were all boys she was in against. And she, she was just dominant. And I, I got to be honest, the people that raced against her knew she was dominant too. So that was yeah. a big plus for us, you know, that, that she had that respect. Now, Bo, were you involved with uh, this at this point in time or were you in a different track? Were you with Wally then? No, we, we were still doing the Saratoga thing. Like I was never around Moneymaker. You okay. know, I was one of the people at the fence in awe of yeah. how <laughs> yeah. Was, yeah. Uh, exactly. I, I was never around Moneymaker at all. Did you want to add anything to that, Russell? No, I mean, uh, Wally said it all. Uh, those types of horses uh, only come around once every hundred years. And yeah. and I, I know, Wally, how uh, how grateful you are to have had the opportunity from the tractor stable to drive her. Um, and, uh, and, you know, that's, that's the horse that you, you know, without... You got what almost eleven thousand wins, but that's the horse that's uh, going to be mostly associated with you. By far, yeah. When I'm dead and gone, and well, she has passed, but when I'm dead and gone in harness racing history, I was, you know, I'll be just a, dri a harness racing driver. But Moneymaker um, is going to be remembered, and if Moneymaker is remembered, I'll be remembered. And uh, even like when they do any kind of like voting now on on the greatest of all time, whether they put her on top or not, she's always mentioned first, second or third. Yeah. And, uh, in, 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 you know, I'm a little biased of course, but hmm. like, I believe that Nia Tross was the greatest pacer of all time. And everybody knows it was Clint Galbraith. So I yeah. believe the greatest trotter of all time, whether it be a male or female was moneymaker. What she done was phenomenal. Both sides yeah. of the ocean. Uh, no other horse has ever done, never going to be able to do it. So, uh, and and I'm, I didn't drive her all the time. I, uh, 80%, 80% of the time, but, but uh, she was my career. Yeah. So I'm going to yeah. go you, into. You brought up, uh, you brought up about the 11,000 wins. Yeah. Here's Wally a few years ago telling me uh, 8,000 wins. Well, wow, that's it for pinnacles. Uh, that's, I won't have any more. <laughs> after that. And yeah. Okay. Wally, whatever. And yeah. I never forget the night of the 10,000 wins. Uh, Danny had a great shot. Wally hit the pay the first couple races. If he win them and then come back and win with Danny's, well, then Danny could hit the 10,000 as the trainer, you know, of Wally's. And if he doesn't win all three, well, then I can get the 10,000. <laughs> well, Wally was having a bad early night, and the first two horses made breaks. So that put Danny out, but it still put me in. And son of a gun, I end up being nine 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 nine. <laughs> well, now we just did the eleven thousand, and I was eleven thousand and one. <laughs> you know, and because we've been around each other so long, like you know, uh, to me, I, it was like a big deal. Like you know, yeah. I wanted to oh, be yeah. number ten thousand, and so did Danny. You know, we both did, and uh, you know, just wanted to be part of you know, something so big, you know, for Wally and for harness racing, like, you know, you imagine 10,000 wins. Like, oh, that's wild. That's phenomenal. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. but uh, anyway, I just want to add that in there. Oh, definitely. No, it's Great. awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, Bo. Well, I, I, I want you hit too, Bo, believe me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, no, I really did. Uh, no, I'll support. Yeah. I, 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 you know, I, I've been the driver and I, you know, I'm not, I'm not the greatest. I'm not the worst. But I, I had a lot of support. Oh, you're pretty good. I'll give you a pretty good. <laughs> we'll give you that wall. You're pretty good. You got a book about you, buddy. So we'll yeah. give you that. <laughs> um, yeah, there, there it is. There's the book with keep, him on the cover again. Book. Yeah. About, about, again. The book, about the book, uh, Russell Scott Bo. Yeah, yeah. 
uh, Larry Wazinski, he, he, he was the man behind the book. Yeah. And, uh, when he first asked me about it, uh, I, I, I really didn't want to, or, you know, I, not that I didn't want to, but I said, you know, I, I, that's not something I think anybody's going to be interested in. He, he said his thing to me was, well, I'm not asking you if you think anybody's interested in it. I'm asking you, would you give me your go ahead to, if, if I decide to do it? And I yeah. said, absolutely. But I did put two stipulations, not, not stipulations, two things that I requested. Mm -hmm. And one being a chapter on Moneymaker. And that's the book, you know, like it's about my family. It's about everything, my career, yeah. but Moneymaker's in there. And the other thing was that my daughter, Christy, write the forward to the book. Yeah. yeah. And uh, Gary, Gary McDougal, who wrote it, tremendous, tremendous job what he done on it. But the, yeah. whole team, the whole team was wild. Gary and yeah. I did in the interviews, and I hooked him up with so many people. But uh, the, Gary, when my daughter, I never seen the, 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 the forward until the book came out. I wouldn't let them let me see it. And uh, But Gary had said to me before the book came out, he said, well, I had most of the chapters done, Wally, but when your daughter sent me the forward, he said, I had to go back over them because I had to step my game up because of how great yeah. a job he done with the forward. So so if anybody's watching this, uh, really, I don't know whether they purchased the book or haven't, but I'll tell you, you know, it's, I know it's about myself and my family and, and my career, but it is a, it is a great read if you're if you're, you know, interested in harness racing. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, no, I've heard good it, things. Yeah, no, it, it is. I, I know Larry quite, uh, quite good now. I'm working with him myself, Wally. And uh, uh, that's a great team over there with uh, Jerry doing research and, uh, and Orly and, and Amber Nicholson is now editing. Um, and uh, Larry is, is just so passionate. And I can tell you firsthand and chatting with him a couple of weeks back, uh, he's your biggest fan, Wally. And uh, it is, it is, it is very, it, it's extremely well written and professional. And the two themes that seem to go through it, and I know this means a lot to you, is the family and also happenstance. And you've talked about that t tonight a little bit with, uh, with just seem to be, you know, in the right place at the right time and things seem to work out for you. And that's, uh, and that's two of the bigger themes throughout this book. So I would encourage anybody to pick it up and, uh, and I know they're going to enjoy it. And as I said earlier, they're going to find out a lot of things that they didn't know about you, Ollie. Exactly. I appreciate that, Russell. Thanks. So I'm going to jump into the most famous moneymaker race. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the name of the race because I was thinking, like, how do I pronounce the name of it? But you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, but, Wally, the one in Sweden, you know, the one with moneymaker. Was it? I love there Very we go. Tough. Thank you, Bo. Thank yeah. you, Bo. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so this is a full race. I know this is a huge deal. We're gonna we're gonna get a speed up here a little bit. It won't be too much longer. But I'm gonna show this race because this is a massive race, and we'll kind of talk about once we've done. So here it is. Giant full money maker, three frisky Fraser, four de fida nu, fem giant touchdown, six running sea, two Georgia Limited, och nummer åtta rival Damkar. Spelarna här på banan har gjort nummer två money maker. Till knapp favorit, spelad till 22 tillbaka för en satsad 10. Andra hans favorit är Taxi Bull, oh, yeah, tredje hans favorit nummer 4, yeah. Defida Nord. Nu, med de här här, sätter till rätta i soffan. Bilen ökar fält, ökar takten, 100 meter kvar till start av 1998 års rit. Alldeles strax är vi igång. Där släpper startbilen iväg fältet, det är Taxi Bull Hornan invändigt, utmanas av två moneymaker. Det kommer också fem giant touchdown. Jag tycker att det är Schoss Verbeck som har avgjort spetsstriden med innerspåret sett. Haxte väl hundra med två moneymaker var väldigt, väldigt bra med i början. Väldigt, väldigt bra var hon med och förvånansvärt bra. Och nu får vi den här duellen då emellan. Och så ska vi se vem som kan degalopera De Fida Nu. Galopp för nummer fyra De Fida Nu. Ett haxte väl hundra i ledningen med två moneymaker utvändigt. Som tredje häst. Där följer fem giant touchdown. Som fjärde nummer tre Frisky Fraser. Så är det positionerna när det är Taxi Bellhundan. Schosserbäck börjar 500 meter på 1-0-9,0. Kommentar. Ja, fortfarande sten och tempo. Förvånansvärt nog så väljer att Hamre ryggen på Moneymaker med Giant Touchdown. Han kunde ha gått i ryggen och fått en, en smid löpning i ryggen på Haxte Bellhundan. Det tyder på att Atle Hamre är ute för att ställa till en riktig sensation här. Tredje spinner på Sjukjordia Limited. Tredje utvändigt Jim Frick bakom nummer 6 Running Seas. En liten lucka till nummer 8 Rival Dankar. 
Har de bara sjunga med sig kvar till mål. Det är Paxter Belhunga, två moneymakers sida vid sidan. Två moneymakers då stenhårt attackerar nummer ett Paxter Belhunga. Är på väg att koppla greppet. De passerar tusen meter där. Klockan visar 1.10.5. Då tar två moneymakers över. Oj, 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 oj. Jag har aldrig, aldrig sett något liknande. Jag vill påstå att här är det, det värsta jag har sett. Hon fullständigt på ett par meter krossade de övriga. Bara klev över Paxter Belhunga. Har han kört för tidigt en gode boll i hennes i frågan är det när det är 300 meter kvar till mål. Då Moneymaker leder. Det är fem Giant Touchdown som är på väg att ta upp jakten. Längre ut kommer också nummer sju Georgia Limited. Vi ska lopera Ariat Haxtebelhona som slagen. Då Moneymaker. Boll i hennes i leder. Fem Giant Touchdown försöker. Långt ut kommer sju Georgia Limited. Mycket, mycket snabbt. Fortfarande två Moneymaker. För sju Georgia Limited som närmar sig hela vägen in mot mål. Men nummer två Moneymaker kommer att röra sig mot linjen och sigen är Moneymakers nummer två. Wally Hennessy vinner, Jimmy Takter i lyfter för kapsen för Jimmy Takter, tränare. Detta Thomas Nilsson var en fantastisk prestation. Ja, eh, naturligtvis. That crowd, my yeah. god, that's, <laughs> wow, I have headphones in and the crowd just a roar of that crowd. So Wally, I mean, I know we're asking tons of questions, but I know you're a huge fan of this. I watched an interview with you talking about this race. This is going to be a massive deal to you winning this race. Yeah, um, Okay, so that guy's he's he's announcing in in in, in Swedish, right? Yeah, I can yeah. imagine what he must have been saying when I'm part. He must be saying, "Where's this guy going?" <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, they didn't know what I knew, what I had in front of me, right? Yeah. And uh, actually, before that race, like I had the two hole, uh, and uh, one of the greatest uh, bowls. Tell you this, uh, one of the greatest horsemen over there, drivers and trainers. Uh, Bernd Lindstedt from Continental Farms. Uh, I went to him before that final, and I said, uh, I, d- "I don't think I should go in behind." You know, like Moneymaker wasn't quick out of the gate, and I, I said, "I don't think I should go in behind Bernie because I said if I do, I might not get out." And he gave me orders, strict orders: do not go in behind. And uh, mm-hmm. I was sitting out there, uh, not where I wanted to be, but. Uh, um, I wasn't panicking because I knew what I had. And uh, like I said, I don't know what that guy was saying going to the half, but you you heard him going to the three quarters. He goes, oh, yo, yo. <laughs> yeah. but, but, yeah. Did you hear the crowd? I mean, that, oh, yeah. God, incredible. Yeah. yeah it was crazy. It was, and believe me, everyone in that crowd, uh, they weren't there just to, they, they drank a lot of beer, but they weren't there just to drink beer. They knew yeah. every horse. They knew every driver. They knew every trainer, yeah. owner. It was just it, it, it's it's one of those um, it's one of those races that it's a must, I guess you know. And I was just yeah. lucky enough to have a horse like her to be able to win it. Yeah, I uh, heard you say, and I watched an interview with you on YouTube. Said it was like winning the Super Bowl. Like mm-hmm. I know what it's like to win the Super Bowl now. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean that crowd. I looked up the crowd of that. It was like fifty two thousand, something like that. Fifty two thousand. A lot people. of people. And there, and yeah. and the thing, the the unique thing about the elite lap is every country's represented, like you know, yeah. like Norway, Denmark, Canada, U.S., yeah. uh, Sweden, Denmark. Yeah. Every, you know, all, all the countries are represented, uh, and um, everybody travels from all them different countries, uh, you know, for this particular weekend, and and it's 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 just it's it's huge, it's massive, it really is. And yeah. uh, the sport over there, much more so, I think, at that time than now, like anywhere else. But uh, like it, it, that, that that's like soccer, you know, like harness racing is big in Sweden. Yep. So, oh, yeah. You can tell. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. That's very cool. Um, we're going to just go through a couple more pictures real quick. And I'm going to, because I know we're kind of, I'm cool with running long, but I, I get your little, you said your throat's bothering a bit, Wally, so I don't want to keep it too long. Oh, I, I, just, I, I could stay on all, all day talking about <laughs> because some of these things, like I had completely forgot about, not her. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, that horse that you said I beat uh, Scotch Garmin with, I, I'm surprised he beat Scotch Garmin, to be honest with you. But. Yeah, he was a nice little horse while he wrapped a bye bye, and that was your and that was your first invitational win. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was surprised because you know, Scotch Garmin was kind of like the. Uh, you know, in New Brunswick, like he carried the torch for yeah. six, seven years at least. I'm going to show you something real quick. I'm going to grab this real quick here. And I hope I don't hit myself here. See Alexander from 76. That's nice. Cool yeah. stuff. Yeah, I got that I from Bill Jr. 
Go ahead. I don't know where all my uh, stuff went from there. I, I, I don't know where it went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got the. I actually had the original Gold Cup and Saucer '74 trophy. You can you might see it in the background there, but I have that also. The original when he won the Gold Cup. But yeah. I love Scott Scott. I was named after Scott Scotman. That was actually named after Scott Scotman. Yeah, the story he, he, is my... he was a great horse boy. He was a for for them times. Uh, he uh, and and he never got an easy trip, Scott. He never yeah. his trips were always like he wasn't really a a, a sprinter out of the gate either. So most times he really had to work hard, and he he never yeah. gave up. Never gave up. Yeah, that heard time. great things. Um, I'm going to jump into some pictures here. Let's go. I'm going to grab some more of John's pictures here. There's your daughter, John. Is that, yeah. That's your daughter, correct? Yeah, that's Jessica. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. So that's her with the horse there. Let's go in here some more. We got another one. We got Wally here. This is you winning the Alexander 81 with pen and play. I think it's 81. Is it 81 or 82? It's 81. 81. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have that there. We're going to. We're leading up to something. It's a cool. Oh, here's another one, Wally. You'll like this. Aubrey Wood gave me that. These, oh, you probably don't remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Larry Aldano. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Old Homewick, I think it was. See, Ar yeah. See, Aubrey kind of cut off. <laughs> yeah. Funny. Yeah. He gave me that picture, and I scanned him. Like, what the hell's wrong with this picture? Like, why can't and I kept scanning it over and over? I'm like, oh, wait a second. And I looked at it. Like, he actually got himself cut off of it. Hmm. That's good stuff there. That Larry oh. Albano, the guy, he he had never been. He, he he's like one of those guys, like uh, another f passion, like you guys to have for the race game, harness racing yep. game. He's he since passed as well, <laughs> but uh, uh, it, it was only about a week before. I, a week before that, I was in Vernon Downs, and uh, I had been telling him that I was gonna. I had to, I had to go back home to Charlottetown the following week. Mm -hmm. And he said, that's one race I'd always love to go to. And I said, well, I said, maybe we can arrange that. And uh, I did. <clears throat> I did. And uh, he stayed. I didn't stay for the Gold Cup. I had to leave for some other thing. Uh, but he stayed. And Greg Blanchard was there then. And uh, Larry had the time of his life there. Uh, great, great guy, Abo. Larry. Yeah, no, real good guy. Larry was, loved harness racing. Uh, big time handicapper, wasn't he, Bo? Yeah. He was a good yeah. man. Yeah, I think I have a picture here of you and Bo at Bo's wedding. There we are. Yeah, is that your Bo wedding there, Bo? Yeah, well, he's the best man there. Yeah, yeah, he was my best man. Uh, he made a toast to John and Bo. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. And we have. And I have a few pictures for you, Wally. These are given to me by Aubrey Wood. Oh, uh, I was nervous. I was nervous at that picture uh, because. Like if I had a dry, set of driving colors on, I'd have been just fine. But yeah, I had yeah. a he had me in a tuxedo, and I'm like, oh <laughs> man. And 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 when I did, I did say, uh, I want to, you know, toast to instead of saying John and Michelle, I said John and Bo. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> so I have one here. This is your mother, Wally. Actually, this is given to Bob Wood also. I think it's your mother and your sister there. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's my niece Jody Lynn, and that's that's uh. Linda's daughter, uh, Jackie, okay. and that's my mom in the middle. Yep, in yeah. the background there. I, I can't recognize that face in the background. I don't that's know. Fancy that's fancy in the back, isn't it? No, no, that ain't Fran. No, I did somebody else. But anyway, we're all having a good time. And yeah. I'll show this last one here. This is oh, actually, I have another one here. This is actually the picture of your 10,000 win. Not the great, you have to kind of look in there real close. And again, I can send you all this stuff, Wally. And if you want yeah. it also, Bo, I can send it to you too. I'd like yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was from Aubrey Wood because Aubrey's like, just like Bruce, go to Aubrey. Got any pictures, Aubrey? I, I I called him and said I need some pictures for Wally's podcast, and he comes to my door and he's like, "Here you go." And I'm going to tell you once we're going to jump into one more race and then we're going to show you a picture. I don't want to hype it too much, but it was really hard not to put it on the EPR Facebook page. But I'm going to put it up next. So before we jump into the last race, I, anything you want to add to that, Russell? No, uh, I, like like Wally said, um, uh, just some great memories from it, and I think that, that Wally, you and John are really going to love uh, love the last picture before we sign off, and I'm going to yeah. share my thoughts about it as well. But before that, we're going to go cut to your gold cup and saucer, something very near and dear to you, because Scott has been able to obtain the video of your first gold cup and saucer, Wally. 2001. I like. I think it's kind of neat because we, we kind of do the states and it kind of comes back full circle right back to home at the end. 
So we're going to jump into last, I guess last half of the Gold Cup, Gold Cup of Sauce 2001. Apologize for the quality. It's not the best, but it's what we have. So here it is. 55, four, fifth. Opening half mile, three, eight, left to go. Turning on to the back stretch. Dollars and pink. The leader, Colina Cavalier, the challenger. Two to the goal. Second over the outside. Now third. Charlotte Flight. No. That had to be a throw for you, Wally, to come back and win the Gold Cup in 2001. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> crazy. I, you know, I've told the story before, but you guys probably never heard it. Uh, Bo has for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, Billy Companion uh, was a trainer of that horse. And uh, his father and my father raced together. Billy was from Summerside and we were from Charlottetown. Yeah. And his father and my father raced together. And he started on me about June or July about this horse that he had to take home for the old home week and, and he really thought it'd be cool him training if i if i would come to drive and uh surprisingly like i i, I if i had been him i would have just gave up because it took me a good month or five weeks to finally commit and say that i was going to go but once once i got there and and, and I, I already knew all the pomp and everything that goes with the yeah. golden saucer and the crowds and the you know, everything, the, the, the build up to it. As far as I'm concerned, like one of the greatest races in harness racing. Oh yeah. That's, yeah. that's, that's my, you know, and once again, I'm biased again, cause I'm from there, but I grew up with the gold cup, but I'm telling you it's, it's a must on everybody's calendar. And, uh, you had to go there and when it was just, you know, it was special, you know, it was, I had a little funny feelings, but you know, to go there and have the favorite and get beat, wouldn't have felt too good, but yeah. um, you know it, it worked out. It worked out, which is it couldn't have, it couldn't have worked any nicer. Yeah. yeah. And you want to add to that one, Bo? Were you there for that, Bo, or were you still? I was, I was actually there that night. Uh, okay. You know, I was one of the spectators watching it, and and uh, obviously, I'd love to be part of it some year. It, it's just the timing always seems bad for us. Whether it's the New York Sires, you know, yeah, we always seem like he said that he had to run out on Gold Cup night because he had to be back for Sire Stakes. Yeah, and uh, you know, I run into that same time, you know, because you know, usually the weekends is our busy time. But uh, just to go back to something like uh, I seen a bunch of your pictures of the diamonds, uh, yeah. I end up with the checkers. Wally had, was experimenting with different colors, yeah. and I was like 14 at the time. And he started going yeah. to the diamonds and he gave me all his colors that he had his original checker colors, and I wore them for a few years and, and then changed them up a little bit. And a few years ago, when I was I was still driving some, uh, there's like five guys in the race with blue and yellow colors, and like three of us were checkered and and diamond. <laughs> so the guy says, "How am I going to keep track of who's who?" Wally looked up and he says, "They'll know at the wire which one's which." <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, well, that's great. No, uh, you did a good job, Bo. You did. A, you, you should be proud of yourself. You you've really done a tremendous. You've had a great career, and it's not over yeah. yet. And yeah. uh, you you really uh, you're making St. John proud because you, you're 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 from St. John. You were born yeah. and raised there, and uh, nobody gave it to you. You worked. You and Michelle worked harder than anybody I know in the sport. So. Hey, you started when you were like seven, eight years old. Would you say, Bo? You were start out young, man. You're still going strong. So that's. Yeah, but no, yeah. I've been lucky. Um, owners have treated me good. Uh, one thing I, I will emphasize: I heard this a million times if I ever heard it once between Marcel and Wally. Be fair, be honest to your owners. Yeah. Good or bad, tell them the truth, and things will work out. And you know, things happen. You know, we have mishaps, and and oh yeah, you, know, you can't hide it. You got to talk to the owners. Mm -hmm. You know, whether you're on the podium or you're in the ditch. You know, you got to talk to them either way, and and I've never ducked it, and 
and my owners have treated me real good and bought me some nice horses. And, and, um, and like I said, I, I lucky enough to surround myself with, that's one of the reasons why I'm driving is I can get some of the best drivers in North America on a regular basis. And one of them sitting right in front of you. Yeah, and, exactly. and, and I'm lucky. Like, you know, he went another race for me just Wednesday past. And, and it's not you, Russell, by the way, he's talking about Wally. Just yeah, like yeah, yeah. Well, I wasn't sure. I knew, I knew, I knew it could have been either one of us. I wasn't sure. Yeah, I'll tell you one of my not not that my driving career was anything, but one of my favorite races, and I got the video from Moncton. Me with my brand new colors. I got new fancy colors, and and it was uh, the feed company that's white, blue, and yellow in the Maritimes was yeah. sponsoring the race. It was the Monctonian Day. Yeah, and yeah. Me, me being the thinking I was a hot shot with my nice blue and yellow colors. Well, that's the color of the cooler. And I come off the turn with a horse, and I, I hit the wheel disc, and I opened up. Well, I thought I was being smart. I put the I talked the whip, and late in the stretch, I hear a horse coming. I look over, and every time Wally hit this horse, he closed harder. And I wasn't showboating anymore. I pulled the whip right back out. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted. I actually still got that cooler, but. Uh, that, only because it was blue and yellow, everybody in the race wanted that race. Yeah, yeah. But, what year was that, Bo? Do you remember? Uh, that would have to be eighty-seven. That would be eighty-seven. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I got the Monctonian from someone there. The it was the eighty-five one, but he had the whole day. Like, it wasn't just the Monctonian; he had the whole day of races. I drove the Moncton to get it, which was amusing. Me, well, I yeah, my girlfriend was with me, but um, I remember getting it. She's like, "We drove for this." seriously for a tape i'm like yeah we did she's like i said listen we'll buy we'll buy food we'll go meet a visitor friend i'll drive anywhere for that stuff i got marcel he's got like stuff in stores in montreal i'm willing to pay for that to get this out here because we're running low on material i'm basically doing podcasting now to keep us rolling so we're gonna get just with to the end we gotta really i mean maybe me and russell are just too excited for this picture wally and Bo. but this is a really really nice picture i'm gonna background it real quick and then we'll tell you when you see it, it comes from aubrey wood and here it comes, and this is this is what it is right here. Oh geez, yeah. Oh my good god. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but, so Russell can jump in, or you guys can all figure out who's who. I'm just gonna sit back and let you do your thing. Well, that's uh, behind me is Checky Charlton, right behind me. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, Aubrey, and uh, Leroy uh, Vincent, Daryl Pierce, uh, Marcel. Gordy, look Gordy, look Gord with the yellow, Gordy, Hennessy, Gordy Ford, yeah. Sean, Sean Dooley, yeah. Orville Willis, Randy yeah. Phillips, Randy yeah. Phillips, uh, Gilles, I think, uh, Ronnie Matheson, uh, John Davidson, and Buddy Mahara. That's pretty darn, that's pretty darn good, Wally, because I had them all except for Orville Willis. Yeah. Uh, and on the far and on the far left in the back is Tony Watson. Tony Watson, yeah, right. Tony Watson, yeah, right beside yeah. Leroy. But oh, uh, Leroy, were we geared up there? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's a couple well, drinks that, flowing. That was your uh, engagement party. Yeah. Oh, no, Ted uh, to Scovel, Ted Scovel, right behind Marcel. Yeah, Ted's yeah right behind Marcel is Ted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. There are a lot of memories there, boy. A lot of memories yeah. there. Yeah. We that well, that, we could, also... that 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 kind of, that kind of leads me like leads me to my uh, to my closing, if I could, Scott. Yeah, go ahead. You know that that picture, uh, Wally and John and and Scott. I think it illustrates how how truly blessed we were to be around Exhibition Park in the seventies and early eighties. Right. Um, you wow. see, you see the the camaraderie there, Wally, with that picture and and all those great horsemen. They most of them were drivers and. Uh, and and I get I, I just feel real lucky, and I think probably Wally that you and John do as well that uh, that we happen to be around Exhibition Park, whether you were driver, trainer, groom, owner, or even a fan. There was a place for you, and uh, and and that picture kind of uh, uh, kind of really illustrates that to to me and Scott anyway, and I hope you and John yeah, feel it. the same way yeah. because uh, it really it's really a great memory, and we thought that you guys would like it a lot. You go ahead, Bo, and then I'll go. You go ahead. Yeah, no, I, I actually remember that night very well, and I actually have a picture with Barb Wally and me from that night. Oh, really? Interesting. Uh, I, I was just looking for it right now. But uh, me, that was back in the day when uh, uh, vest and cords were a big deal. Yeah. And I, I thought I had the coolest jacket vest on there, <laughs> the cords, and I'm looking, oh, my God, with <laughs> 
my hair, I don't even know what I was doing with my hair back then. <coughs> but anyway, no, it, anyway, I remember that clear. That was at uh, down Rossi Avenue there, almost in town there. What was the name of that hotel there? Park Plaza, I think. Was it? Colonial. Yeah. Colonial. Colonial, yeah. Yeah, I got Colonial the one too. Yeah. Colonial Lane. This, this here yeah. too. This is a cake you got to Wally. Yeah. <laughs> the guys there. Want to take that, a quick uh, look. And, oh, yeah. That's yeah. Um, uh, uh, Ronnie and Chicky. And, and yeah. on the right, see the with the cigarette and the drink? That was yeah. Calvin Matson's wife. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's Gail. Yeah, yeah. yeah Gail, yeah. I live with them. I live with them for uh, one season there. In, in, yeah. In yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's so. lovely. People. Are they still alive? <laughs> uh, yeah. No. Uh, actually, I, I I've seen Calvin not too long ago, Wally. Yeah. And so is Gail still alive too. Yeah. Remember the smoke yeah. shop what was it down on. Uh, yeah, to uh, Tobin's to Tobin smoke shop where Calvin worked for many years. That was. I think it was Gail's parents owned it, Gail, didn't they? Yeah. yeah, it was Gail's family that owned it. Yeah. Yeah, Weasel yeah. Weasel Shoe Store was next door. Yeah. Weasel, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to have a horse for that guy too. I forget his name. Yeah. yeah. It's, you know, it's crazy to say that. I um like so many people back then owned horses. I actually went to if you ever heard of Loyal City and Coins, it's a little like they have like old stuff in there. It's a little pawn shop uptown. And I was in there talking to the guy one day and uh he said, Oh, do you are you the guy that does the EPR stuff? You do that? I'm like, yeah, I'm the guy. Like, uh, I get videos. Yeah, I used to own horses back in the 70s, and I hear that so much. Like, there was so many owners back then. Like, so many people wanted in on that back then. Like, I guess you can say, Bo, you guys both know that. Like, you and Wally know that. Like, so many owners back then. Compared, unfortunately, now not so much. Well, well, we were the only show in town. Yeah, Russell yeah. will tell you that. We, we, we like, That's right. uh, and uh, back then everything was booming. Like, like. Uh, the port was going a point la pro uh the pulp and paper mill was uh, the money you know that was being generated because they were good paying jobs back then and and yeah. uh, and uh you know there was no lotteries there was no nothing and and uh and uh wednesday night and saturday afternoon it, it was the happening in st john it really was yeah. Yeah. it really happened yeah, and i think and, and I think Wally too that sometimes, and I and I try to stress this to people in my writing and and my research, there was more to it than just gambling. There really was a camaraderie and a social aspect to it. And no, uh, I know Marcel, no. I know Marcel talked about that on his podcast of of all the people that would be around his barn on race day and race night, and uh, and it was the same with your barn too. So, um, oh, so and I, even the people in the grandstand, Russell. Like, yeah. like if, if you did happen to go over there, uh, anybody that was on the backstretch, there was nobody that was in that grandstand that didn't know who you were. Like if you were involved in the horse game, it was, right. it was a, it was a great, it was great, you know, great memory, great times. And, uh, you know, we, we were lucky that we were a part of it. I'll tell yeah. you something real quick and I won't keep us long, but. Um, do you remember Wally? And I, you know what? I can't find this video. It bugs me. Steve Mahar gave me a box of videos of about a year ago, and I recorded all them. And there was one where I think it was you, Marcel, and maybe Steve at McAllister, McAllister Place Mall in your uniform with turtles. You probably don't remember that. Day. I think you guys were promoting maybe exhibition week. And you're, I wish I found, you know, I had that video. And I was like, no, I'm not going to post it. I'm just going to leave it because it's not racing yeah. related. And I delete it. But I, if I ever find it, I'll, I'll show it to you guys. It's yeah. like you guys are staying around. You have your, your colors on, like your whole uniform. And you're promoting. Must be actually Mr. Week. And you're racing turtles. <laughs> it's like yeah. it goes on for like 20 minutes. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not uploading this. But I just thought it was funny. Um, but I mean, yeah. really, you guys were like local celebrities almost. You got to really think about it. You were. I mean, you guys were well known around the city, right? So Yeah. And and one other fellow guys while we're on here because I know I'm not going to probably get on with these again, so I'm going to give out a shout out to this guy. Definitely, yeah. Uh, he he was the voice of uh, Canadian racing. Oh yeah. In the king from high yeah. atop the grandstand. Yeah. He yeah. was the best. Uh, he he Doug, Doug had hired him, you know, not only for that because he knew he knew Doug wanted always to have the best, yeah. and he got the best in Ingham, and. Uh, not only the best announcer, Ingham had a great personality about him, and he he worked for the radio station, and uh, he wrote a column. He was a big PR guy, 
Another another guy back in them days too, guys. Another guy I got to give a shout. I I don't want to go on crazy here, but no, go nuts. Take as long as you want. I'm in no fry. I got nothing to do. Go ahead. Keep going as long as you want, Wally. Harry, Harry Trainer yeah. was huge. Like he he gave a lot of write ups back in them days, and 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 he devoted a lot of time to to, to our sport, you know, and mm -hmm. and. and and it was, it was it, like like we were in the paper every every day, every other day. The yeah. harness racing was, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was huge, it was huge. Yeah, the, the the media the media coverage was was certainly different uh, back then for sure, Wally. Mm -hmm. um, before we uh, before we sign off, I just wanted to say, Wally, number one, how much we appreciate you and John taking the time to uh, to spend with us today to to do this. Uh, and I also want the viewers to know how hard Scott has worked. He worked all night. Uh, putting those videos and pictures together. So if anybody, uh, when they do tune in, please give Scott a like and a comment. Subscribe. That's what, subscribe, that's right, people. Subscribe. Yeah, subscribe. But, that, yes. but that's what motivates Scott to to continue to do these. And thank you again, Scott, for allowing me oh, to, wow. to jump in and, and try to say something intelligent. But uh, there's an old saying, Wally and John, and that saying is uh, you'll never lose track of where you're going if you never forget where you're from. And it's been evident to us that uh, John, you and Wally have never forgot where yeah. you're from. And uh, from Cambridge, Frisco to Penaplay to Moneymaker, Wally, it's been a great career. So all the best with the rest of the season for with both you fellas. And and thanks again for taking the time to, to sit in with Scott and I. I appreciate it too, guys. That's uh, you go, Bo. You go, Bo. You, you go. Yeah, and no, I appreciate being asked, and 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 uh, you know, I. I I actually mentioned this to Scott earlier. It might sound weird, but I someday I want to go back home. Like a lot of people go to Florida to retire. Yeah, you were saying you want to I'm come back here to retire. I think I'm doing the opposite. Like, like I, I really want to, you know, maybe not in the winter, maybe I, I go to <laughs> yeah. Florida in the winter, but I, yeah. I, I, I miss being home. And, and, you know, when we get busy in the summer, like sometimes you don't even know what day it is because you're running different tracks every day. Yeah. And it's just so nice. You know, just to back down just a little bit. Like, I will never be out of horses. Like, you know, yeah. I'll never get away from horses. Like, e even if I was in St. John with one or two. Like, you yeah. know, yeah. I, it's without horses, I doubt I'll ever do that. But, uh, you know, a lot of people come down here, and it's great. Believe me, I love the weather for the last 34 <laughs> winters. But at the same time, it, it's fast-paced. And, and, and I like it. I do like it. I love yeah. traveling in the summer. But... When I slow down, I think it's going to be slowing down in St. John. I think, Wally, you were saying to yourself that you, I've seen every you. Once you're done, you'll probably go back to Charlottetown. You think maybe once it's all over, maybe? Yeah. Possibly? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, well, yeah, I would say summertime's for sure. But yeah, uh, definitely. You know, in, in, in my closing, uh, I, I want to, uh, you, you, you guys are thanking Bo and I and, and everybody else. I hear you thanking, but I want to thank Russell, you, and, and Scott. And uh, for, for your passion for, for the harness racing game, uh, you know, uh, it was it, it was bred, bred in you, I guess. But uh, yeah. still, uh, you know, th thanks for having Bo and I on. And uh, I, unfortunately, I don't get to watch a lot of your stuff because I'm not on uh, social media stuff, Facebook or anything. So I, I don't get to see a lot of it. But, but Bo fills me in and says, you know, you put up all the old races from the Exhibition Park and, and – yeah. uh, I want to thank you guys, and I'll, and tell Bo how proud I am of him. Uh, oh yeah, uh, been a big time supporter of mine throughout my whole career. Yeah, and and, and, and we're the best friends. So that's, that's my goal. Awesome guys. Well, I appreciate everybody coming on. Russ, oh go ahead, Bo. No, I was saying it, it is a lot. Like you know, along with being the best of friends, but actually, you know, truthful, he's been more like a second father to me forever. Like yeah. like forever. And, uh, you know, you can't value friendship. It's just, you know, it's there. But yeah. uh, anyway, thanks for having us on. Oh, I really appreciate it, guys. You have no idea. We're going to have a lot. People are going to love us, too. Don't forget. Like, people are going to love it. And you can see, uh, Bo, I'm going to put a little teaser up at the end. But I appreciate you, Wally, coming on and taking the time out of your schedule. I know Bo, same thing, really busy. Russell, yeah, you're okay. No, I'm just kidding. I appreciate you, Russell. <laughs> you're awesome, too. You help out a lot. I do appreciate you. But thank you, everybody. I really, I really appreciate everybody coming on. I appreciate everybody that watched. And um, yeah, if anybody wants to add anything else or whatever, yeah. I really enjoyed it. I really Thanks, enjoyed Wally. it. Thanks, Wally. Appreciate yeah. it, guys. Yeah. All right, sure. guys. Take care. Enjoy your. Don't root for the Bengals tomorrow. By the way, the Rams are winning.
Yeah. Like the Rams, but the Bengals <laughs> took my Kansas City, and so I'm not rooting for the Bengals. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. Take, take, take care. care. Take care, fellas. All the best. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Park. Come on and live at Exhibition Park. The real life fun harness racing.